Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Fake Nerd Podcast. I'm Brandon T. McClure. With me, as always, Ben Magnet. Hello. Ryan James Eliopoulos, the 14th Esquire, the 15th. Your, go- your new gods are here, baby. <laughs> uh, Sparks Witty. The 14th Esquire, the 15th. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's the new That's the new lineage that yeah, we're going I in. I think so. The new, yeah, yeah. And uh, joining us once again, Mike Matola. Yay. What's up? Hey. Welcome back, Mike. How oh, you doing, buddy? You. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. 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 Surviving the summer. Surviving it's too the summer. hot. Yes. Every year, it's like, hey, this is not, probably not going to be that bad. And then I'm like, I am, I'm awful. Took Perfect. a long time to get to this point, though. Yeah. yeah. It's awful. That means it's going to get only worse and worse. That's great. Yeah, we might it. be in for a, a, hot, a hot winter. It was the hottest day in the UK the other day on record. Good stuff. Hell yeah. The love breaking records. Good job, America. <laughs> Good job, Earth. Good job, the UK. Climate change. Good real, job, guys? America. <laughs> yeah. we, we made UK. We helped. Okay. We helped global warming a lot. <laughs> All right, so yeah. we're so we're back. I'm back in the I'm back in the the saddle, in the saddle, saddle yeah. here. Uh, how was your guys' week? It was. Uh, let me think. What's it was pretty the, good. I, honestly, I've only had X Men on the mind because comics and movies. Every so it's <laughs> mostly been X Men. I've also had X Men on the mind, but only because I get your tweets to my phone. Yeah, and it's just been. About you should turn. <laughs> you should turn them off because I can't stop. <laughs> it's just, you're, you've changed your name to an X Men thing. I've never changed my Twitter handle name in my life, and in uh, House of X changed my life. <laughs> yeah, the one issue. The, yeah. Okay. For real, it's it's a great comic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you read you read House of X. Uh, Are we doing this right now? Yeah. Why not? Oh shit! All right. right okay. Yeah. So uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of the Marvel comics. I'm a big fan of the X Men. It's really cool that we're watching all the X Men movies and and doing high sound about that. Um, that would be later. That would be later. Yeah. Yes, in the future. That's why Mike's here. Um, so people online have been going crazy about this comic, uh, and I think rightfully so, uh, because um, for the last 55, 60 years of the X-Men, they have very much been in a, in a passive mode. They have always been reactionary to what's happening to them. You know, They, they go to their school, and they hide from the people who want to who, who wanna hurt them. They go to Genosha, and they want to be left alone on their own little island. They, Magneto, uh, Magneto builds a space base on an asteroid in space to get away from the humans, uh, and it never works. Cause how, how have they never known just to go to Counter-Earth, which still exists in the Marvel Universe? It does, because uh, that's also too crazy to think about. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the X-Men have always been reactionary to things that are happening to them. You know, they're they're an oppressed people, uh, and they've never they've never fought back before, mm-hmm. right? Uh, this is the first time in X-Men history where Magneto and Xavier are uniting. The X-Men are truly united as a people. And they are moving forward saying, we are the evolutionary superiors of the human race. We are your new gods. You will bow to us. And it is heady and it is bold. And it's something that Marvel Comics has never done before. And, it's, and it's so, it is such a status quo change that happens all the time in comics. You know, Captain America dies, he comes back. <coughs> Steve Rogers, or, uh, Tony Stark dies, he comes back. Uh, Age of Apocalypse happens, it gets reverted. This is a new, like, this is this is Doomsday Clock for the Marvel Universe, but it's actually happening in real time. <laughs> it's actually happening. Doomsday uh, Clock, Jesus. yeah, and, yeah, like and, what Rebirth and Doomsday what Clock Rebirth wanted to do, to and and it has done, but it's taking because of Doomsday Clock, it's taking so much time. Yeah. This is a six issue miniseries that will be over in six weeks, uh, uh, twelve weeks, because they're swapping every they're, week with. Power. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, so so yeah, so uh, so twelve weeks. It's a lot, man. It's a lot of X Men books, but. Yeah. Uh, the X-Men have been stagnant in storytelling for a long time because they've always, they've always been held in this position of, of passive, and they've never fought back like Magneto because that's always been, he's been the bad guy, quote-unquote bad guy, right? Uh, this is such a cool new direction, and it's made me so excited, not just for X-Men, but for Marvel Comics because Jonathan Hickman is a, he's, he really is like a game changer, everything he writes. He did Secret Wars, and he fundamentally changed the Marvel Universe forever. Secret Wars is like, there is, there is a pre-Secret Wars, post-Secret Wars world, and now this is a, Post the X Men are now your new gods world, uh, and it's it's it made it makes makes me so excited. I'm like I'm freaking out thinking about it. And I had you guys read it so we could just talk about it for a little bit because uh, a lot of people are more excited for the X Men than they've been in decades. I've seen for real a for lot decades. of the same sentiment from people about um, just people super excited about this run of the X Men. And Jonathan Hickman, I've read some of his Avengers. I've not read all of it, but I definitely read all of Secret Wars. Um, he's a really good writer. Uh, some of his stuff doesn't work for me right away. Yeah. So I will acknowledge that this this book, just this issue, didn't quite do it for me. Um, but that could also just be, hey, this is the first X Men comic I've read. <laughs> really? Ever? Really? I mean, I've read a couple of. Uh, oh wow. I've cu- read a couple of story arcs every now and then, but. Okay. Well, I, think, really? I, think, I mean, new ty- new comics take three issues. It's my like comics anime rule. Where it's yeah. Like, yeah, 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 the yeah. First three, to, yeah. and they're like, oh, I okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're getting this would be like the first. This is the first like ongoing x-men comic i've read i've read yeah. i've read like days of future past and i read like just like s- sporadic stories that's still, count. that still counts didn't you read pieces of ultimate x-men 
specifically pieces Hickman oh, I wrote? I did, but I... R- no, Hickman. I never got to Hickman's. Mm. Okay. I never okay. got to Hickman's Ultimate X-Men. Okay. Um, I stopped because it was just a boring slog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really depends on which section of Ultimate X-Men you're reading. Yeah, I, I think Ultimate X-Men started strong, <clears throat> dropped off. Ultimate Fantastic Four was always just boring to me, but... Sure. As far as, like, the Ultimate stuff, but yeah. Yeah, this would be, like, the first time... So it's it's not really... It doesn't really give me the same ex- excitement, but I can definitely see why people are excited about yeah. something like this. What about um, you, Ben? What are you thinking? Did you read this one, Ben? Oh, I did. Yeah. No, yeah, it's just um, just uh, flipping through it again just to look back at it. Because first, I had no idea what the frack was going on. I mean, because I, I haven't read a whole lot of X-Men. I do have love for the X-Men char- uh, characters um, because of the cartoon and the films as a kid. But I never, you guys know, I never really got into comics until I was an um, adult. But reading this, especially the scene, I love the scene between Cyclops and Reed Richards a lot. Like, when I saw Fantastic Four, I'm like, oh, sweet. But then I'm like, man, Cyclops. I don't like you, Cyclops. There's, there's a couple panels uh, that are making waves on the internet because, like, they're really impactful and they're really. It's great because when you think of the villains of of the X Men that are, you think of like Magneto and most recently Cyclops. And in this issue, you know who the focus is? It's Cyclops and Magneto. All the heroes they're in the background because this is Magneto's vision of the X Men that is finally coming true. And it's it's kind of scary, which Especially is really cool. Because Xavier's always been why on is the it other scary end. to you? Because because we don't know what the future means and they're basically like putting the, their foot on humanity's neck so, saying so you <clears throat> so so you uh relate to humanity in this situation well it's just scary because like the x-men are the heroes right and they're coming at it from like we have been oppressed for 50 years and we are finally taking control of our rightful heritage of the evolutionary so, leaders so the premise is essentially that Xavier and Eric have gathered all the mutants on an island called uh, Krakoa, Krakoa, which, which is, is a mutant. living mutant. It's a living mutant, and yes. he's created he's created through flowers. Uh, Everything's a mutant now. He's yeah. created through flowers a portal that allows mutants to travel from all different points of the world to get to the he's island. He's created but human beings can't pass through. He's created it. dozens of embassies, are not only around the world, around the universe, putting like their their stake. As like as like the leaders of the universe, basically. Yeah. See, it's so fast. So so full disclosure, I've not read. The yeah, first yeah, yeah. Issue. Right. Um, it's just so interesting. All these things you guys are saying, like motivations, especially for X Men, are fascinating because, like, we're all on this island. I want more. Like, yeah. I'm so, like, I'm Doctor Xavier. I live in a mansion in Connecticut. I have a British accent, even though I grew up in <laughs> New England. And um, that's a good no, point. I never realized li- that life is horrible. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the worst. So the we whole- need Magneto. You're right. Like, well, that's the thing. Like, it's, it's, Xa- a, it's an interesting. It is like Xavier has fought his whole life. Like, I can't. I can't be like Magneto. Like humans. Like we should live alongside them. Whereas Magneto thought is like, no, we are better than them. We have evolved past them. And and again, this is only first issue, but like this is a strong stance of like maybe Magneto was right. <laughs> so right. why do you think? Um, Human, the mutants have evolved past humanity because of the special, the superpowers. Basically, yeah, it's just like Magneto's thinking. Like he's yeah, yeah. he's Homo superior. So, he thinks like, he's so, more than a human being is. All right, interesting. Yeah. interesting. So the whole right. thing is that uh, mutant repopulation wasn't expected to surpass human beings okay. uh, after an event. Uh, what was okay? It? So uh, oh, Grant okay. Grant Morrison's new X Men. Um, uh, Charles Xavier's evil clone Cassandra Nova built this super sentinel and wiped out 16 million mutants on Genosha right. and destroyed Genosha. So 16 million mutants were wiped out. Right. It's called the Genosian GS- genocide. genocide. Yeah. E is yeah. for extinction was the event. Oh, that's what that was. Because they mentioned it in the book. I'm like, what? Yes. The- right. Yeah. Human- yeah. Mutants were going to take over the amount uh, of like, there was going to be more mutants than regular people. And, and Cassandra Nova was like, I cannot allow this. <laughs> so she wiped out almost all the mutants. Uh, and that was the biggest thing that happened to the X-Men since they were created uh, 30 years prior. So Jonathan Hickman basically wrote the idea that at that point, in, within 10 years, they would have overtaken mankind. Hu- and now it's 20 <clears throat> years. Now it's and 20 human, years. human beings weren't worried anymore. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, over the course of two years, mutant repopulation spiked. And then this happens. Yeah. So a clandestine group of like people from Shield, people from like all different aspects are like we're going to create this organization uh, to basically stop mutants from the Orcus spreading. Protocol. How do they? How do you? How do they define a mutant versus a human in the comic book? It, uh, if you have the X gene, if you have the X gene, again, and That's this it. is this is a base thing of like the past six years of the X Men of like oh we're oppressed because we're different, but everybody in the Marvel universe has superpowers, so the stories aren't. And I get what the, again, like, I'm not trying to take away the metaphor of what the X-Men mean, but for storytelling, when you're trying to tell the same story six years later, when you have the Avengers, who everyone loves, but people hate the X-Men, and half the X-Men are Avengers. It's why they try Yeah, that's why it's so, it's, that's it's, why it's weird. That's why like, this Spider-Man's new version, great, but then, like, oh, but you're a mutant, Exactly. It's, 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 it's 
it's kind of yeah. silly sometimes. It's, it's really weird. At, which at is, this point, yeah, it's kind of a little this, ridiculous. Which is why this story is so exciting because what it is is it's all of the mutants saying, you know, we've been doing this for fifty years of stories where we've we've been oppressed and they've been divided and we've been themselves. taking it and yeah. we've been allowing it to happen and we're over it. So here's the thing: we should have the world. We're gonna take this island. You can't come there. You respect this, and we'll help give you things that will cure diseases and all those things. But you respect that. All we're taking is an island, and we're giving you the rest of the world. You leave us alone. We're gracious. You should be he- grateful that we're doing this for you. This is what the and uh, they tried to do the, this with the Inhumans a couple of years ago uh, during Civil War II uh, and around <coughs> that, that area when um, they were really pushing the Inhumans. This was kind of the idea that they were trying to do. Like the Inhumans are going to be the oppressed people because there are now multiple of them, but it doesn't work. But for some reason, it's always kind of stuck with the X-Men. Yeah. Well, the Inhumans, the Inhumans are not the X-Men. That's a problem. They try to turn them into the X-Men. Yeah. And that's what they're not. Um, there's, there's a quick panel that, again, that's making around that's like, this is like some of the best stuff in the comic. It's Sue Storm, and she's going Cyclops. This amnesty, the other things Xavier is doing, what are you guys thinking? And, Scott, and uh, Cyclops says, my family has spent our entire lives being hunted and hated. The world has told me that I was less when I knew that I was more. Did you honestly think we were going to sit around forever and just take it? Yeah, that's that's really interesting. And it's that it's sounds it's, it's super cowardly is, from yeah, Cyclops. Yeah, is that interesting? Uh, I like it because really? I do because like Cyclops for the last couple of years has taken the Magneto approach. Like he has become the new Magneto, basically. Well, who do you okay? So who do you think? Who's wiser? Like I mean, this just reminds me of that saying: "The meek shall inherit the earth." Yes. And then the phrase, <clears throat> what that like the alternate of that phrase is like the samurai who knows how to use the sword but keeps it sheathed. Yeah, yeah. And so I, you just see Cyclops just like. Like, oh, I can hurt you. But I won't. And I'm not, st- he's like, he's not strong enough to take the oppression anymore. Yeah. And it's almost like, like, he, you know, he was a s- very stoic. He was always, you know, that's why it's scary because yeah. it's, uh, because he's taking the cowardly way out. It's really interesting. Yeah. Like, and like that, that's why it's out, such, it's not brave. That's why it's such an interesting you know? approach yeah. because again, the last almost 60 years, it's always been the other way and it hasn't worked. So like they're like, man, maybe we actually have to try the violent way. But they're still not being violent. They're like, listen, we inherit the earth, but we're going to give it to you. Just don't mess with us, and or you will really regret it. And they're not just doing it on Earth. They're doing it in the universe. Like they're planting their Krakoa on Mars and on the moon. And it's just like, this That's is super, it's super bold. And again, the most telling thing about this comic for me is you think of like, you think of the X-Men, you think of Wolverine, right? Wolverine is in this comic for two panels. And the two panels you see him, he is smiling and he's playing with children. Same with Xavier. Xavier is only in the in the book yeah. for like three panels, and he just says, "Welcome Again, home." Again, like the core X Men are like not focused, and every time you see like the core X Men planting seeds, their faces are always facing away. You never actually see their emotions. Mm. So again, like the focus is on the X Men, but it's a very like almost sinister approach, and that's why I love this so much because this is the X Men have never been written like this. It is it is fascinating that like these people who are uncorruptible are like, for us to survive, we have to become what we hate, and I think that is I think that's almost. I think that's like really sad, but also like really powerful, because like they're tired of they're tired. It, it, no, you're 100 percent right. But like w- when they have been murdered countless times, like they have to fight back, and like this is the only thing they think they can I do. Guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Do you? No, it's but, it's, well, but that's what I've read a lot of comics. Be yeah, that's what that's I mean. What, like, yeah, that's why it's, it's, it's 60 years of X Men comics, it's, and this has never been. It done. almost seems very topical. Like yeah. it is a reflection of society. I just, I, I, it, no, that's actually a good point. Yeah. If he's, you know, uh, John Hickman is reframing the X Men into a into a more kind of twenty first century uh, topical approach. Yes, uh, instead of a old world sixties approach. Civil's right, civil rights. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is what they've been so locked into with the allegory for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which even that was. Yeah, that was interesting. And uh, yeah. uh, to end this beautiful X Men note, I'm so glad I got oh. to talk about this as much as I have. But uh, the final, some of the final lines, it's like Magneto is saying. Charles Xavier has made you an offer, one full of grace and brotherly love, but one that is also written in stone. This is not a negotiation. Things will be different now, and the sooner you realize the finality of your situation and the inevitability of ours, uh, things will be much better for you. And the guy he's talking to, he's like, Do you know what you sound like? Do you like? know what you sound like? And he says, I do. And it finally feels good to say it. And like, Magneto's finally won. Yeah. His, his crusade, not just in the Holocaust, but trying to be a mutant survivor, like, it took him this long. And you know what? This is maybe a bad move for the X Men, but they finally are all happy. 
and that's that's the only thing I could ask for, right? So like this is a new weird status quo, and I I really can't wait to see what the future God. holds. That was actually my favorite Happiness part of the whole book. At, you know what price? Or what exactly. Cost? That's what that's what makes it so interesting because it's not just the same like oh the X Men are getting attacked by Sentinels for the three thousandth time. Like it is like a. I fr- bet there'll be Sentinels. No, there, the there absolutely are Sentinels. Oh, is it the Sentinels? No, again, yeah. but it's taking all the history. When when I thought they were gonna relaunch the X Men, I thought they were gonna do something completely different, like bring in the Eternals, rewrite their history, and I'm glad they didn't because this much like a Grant Morrison, he builds on the past to build this crazy future. Yeah. Uh, and Morrison's a really good. Uh, Jonathan Hickman, Morrison, Jeff Johns, like they yeah. all come to the same ilk. That idea of, you know, we'll take every story as if it actually happened and yes. build off of that story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a really cool start. And like, it's really nice to see people excited for the X-Men because like, the X-Men are, at, in the 90s, they were the highest, highest selling comics. They are the first like million selling comic. In the like, past couple of years, let's be honest, Marvel didn't know what to do with them. They, yeah, of course they didn't. Yes. So this, this, this comics is just blowing people's minds? Yeah. Are they relating to it or is it just causing a stir? I, I think, think there's, a, I think there's a, kind of a couple of, uh, yeah. probably I think it's some just, people are relating to it, some people are yeah. just, you know. For me, it's someone who is a big fan of the X-Men, like, of course, like, good writers can do good stuff on X-Men, but like, when, when a character is stagnant, you can only do so much. Mm-hmm. This is like a firm change, like a hard left, where it's like, mm-hmm. wow, the the future is like endless. Like so many stories that we've never seen are going to happen. I think the other thing about it is just knowing that this isn't just a single event uh, series. This is, this is Hickman the st- doing a, the beginning of a run. So this is not going to be just like one year where the X-Men did this one thing, remember, where they tried to seize control and then it was undone. This yeah. is like a lasting change that's going to play out ripple, for a while. Ripple for years. Yeah. I yeah. hope not. It, this to me, this just sounds like 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 uh, what if Batman started using guns? But it's and not you're like oh, I see what you're saying. But this okay. isn't like yeah, I, I guess like the way I'm describing it, it is more violent, but it isn't. It's it's more. It, it, there's no action in the in the. There's no book. action. Well, at no, all, no, yeah. but but X Men has always been a war of ideology. Yes. And so my example of Batman using a gun isn't because of violence. Okay, sorry. What if Batman just started poisoning all the villains? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about that? I think yeah. maybe yeah, they got lost. Right. In the if the story's good it's enough, like, no, no, if he gives not... me a reason for it, then then sure. But like, is, it needs to be good enough. Which, I don't think it's going to last that long. Well, which, I actually disagree with. I think uh, it, yeah. this is just going to be a, a one trick pony. Oh, well, man. which goes back to what uh, you were saying, which is you know. Is this a good thing? No, it's not a good thing for the X Men. But that's the whole point of telling the story: is like they're going to try it, they're going to do it, and like, what are the consequences of them doing it? Now? Well, I just hope it pans which out that to, way. Yeah, but which is, hope is to what you have show when you what their ideology the is. Yeah. And I think Jonathan Hickman, you know, Jonathan Hickman, Hick- Hickman has said he's on this book for a long time. Yeah. So he he has a plan. Uh, whether or not you know, I'm I'm always a fan. I, I regardless of whether or not I like it, I prefer to writer. I prefer writers to at least do their plan. Right. 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 Um, so like, <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of like. Yeah, do it. Yeah, and we'll judge it after. I think it's probably it's really kind of interesting. Thing. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Anything else? We I, to that's bring? all I care about this week. Honestly, <laughs> to hear more about <laughs> X Men, check out off. our X Men special with Mike Matola yes. in a different episode. Hell yeah! <laughs> uh, you guys, did anything else of note you wanted to touch on? Uh, I got a couple of things. Oh good. I watched a lot of movies. Like <laughs> almost all of the X Men movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my God. Yeah. This week. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, I helped some friends propose, so that was awesome. Oh, did that happen? Yeah, yeah they got engaged. Nice. Yeah. That's Beautiful. Awesome. What else did I do this week? Did I do anything with you? Did we do anything? We watched some X-Men. We watched stuff. Mostly X-Men. Oh. Spattering. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ben? I just went back to work, and now my legs really hurt. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, that's, that's about it. I, I forgot to mention this last week, but I went to see Crawl. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, new, the Sam Raimi? The new Sam Raimi. Um, forgot the director's name. Alexander Aja. Alexander Aja. Uh, I really like that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, highly recommend. That's so good. Yeah. But the uh, I also saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood this week. Oh, which I was not as jazzed about as a lot of people. I know a lot of people are like it's blowing people's minds. It's like some <laughs> of the best movie. It's like the best movie of the year. Just a lot of people. Um, I think it's good. Mm-hmm. I, I think the stuff with Brad Pitt and Leo DiCaprio are excellent. I think that's the movie. Like this, that stuff is incredible. Brad Pitt's amazing it in the movie. Um, the stuff with Sharon Tate and the Manson family, I really wish it was taken out of the movie because it's, to me, and a lot of people are disagree with this, but to me, it's useless. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think the ending is earned. And, and despite the ending actually being one of the best parts of the movie, well, there. which is a really strange place for me to, to, to sit because I, I don't think you earned that ending, but it is a lot of fun. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'll just see it. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. And you guys, Did uh, anyone else see it? 
Not yet. Oh, thank and God. obviously, you guys. I'm glad you just didn't drop like any huge spoilers. No, I, w- no. I wouldn't. And obviously, amazing. Brad Pitt's in it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you, you guys may feel differently. A lot of people are. Um, that's Send just kind a, of where I sat. Yeah. Send you a, a all caps text. <laughs> if I disagree, I disagree with the things you said. Yeah, that's um, it. But I think the standout is Brad Pitt. Like he is so good in that movie. Uh, who who was it that said? Someone here said it's Ryan. You said that Brad Pitt is a character actor trapped in a leading man's body. No more is that true than this movie. Oh, who they said that? Uh, that yeah, no, it's not. I didn't Alec Baldwin too. Same thing. Character actor trap. Oh yeah, yeah. Probably. Oh, totally. Yeah. Although nowadays Alec Baldwin doesn't really look like a leading man. Yeah, no. He's, now he's Looks a, like three a character actor man. stuck <laughs> in the man. Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God. It's like Liz Lemon. You got to cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is no God. <laughs> I also caught up on uh, the Green Lantern by Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp. Yeah. Uh, it's real good. Yeah. It's a real good Green Lantern run. I caught up on uh, on Guardians. That book's great. Oh uh, yeah, I, I got to p- just pick up the new issue. Um, I'm really excited to read oh, that. Oh, I did do something. Yeah, I beat Mega Man Eleven. Yeah, you guys. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah that... I didn't see your Instagram post about it. I did. No, I did it. Oh, he did nice. it. The first time you've beaten it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. How long have you been playing it for? Uh, a few days or hour hours wise, it's about uh, I put a good seven hours into it. That's it. Yeah. I'm impressed. He's, he's plays a lot of Mega Man. He's good. I at guess it. so. Yeah, yeah, rock and roll, man. Oh, I also caught up on a bunch of TV shows this week. I caught up. I finished Hilda, the Netflix animated mm-hmm. series. Very oh. good. Very wholesome. Like wow. So we th- watched really, the first episode, really good. right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I caught up on the Orville. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Right. And the Orville. Uh, holy shit! Some of the best Star Trek stories I've seen outside of Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek. Oh yeah, it's just all Star. Yeah, he's just. Uh, well, it's was, just what everyone kind of wanted, TNG. but There's they like, had to make it like a comedy just yeah. to get it past fox or something talking, like in a weird i was yeah. talking to my girlfriend um about it where we were just like you know i would pause it every now and then be like this reminds me of this star trek story and this reminds me of that star trek story like they're taking obviously brandon braga works on the show and he he worked on star trek next generation for a long time um and so i was like kind of kind of like they seem to have cherry picked some star trek episodes and do them in their own kind of way while also taking like different spins on them there was one episode in particular with um uh the uh, a female mocklin colony um, which anybody, if you listen, if you watch the Orville, you know what that means. If you don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain it. There aren't females. That. Um, and it was it went in a completely in a direction that I completely did not see because I was relating it to a Star Trek story that was similar. Um, That's how they get you. And I I was blown away. And the finale is so good and so well. Done. I saw some Twitter stuff. People really like that finale. Yeah, that finale is real good. Uh, yeah. I, I'm glad you really enjoyed that. Yeah, like I, how those last two episodes are paired together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I was didn't, shocked. I didn't expect the last episode to follow up on that. No, I didn't before. either. When that episode, when that episode, the second to last episode ends and something like drastically changes, I'm just like, oh shit. And then that, it feels. But like I didn't standing. think they were going to play it off. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact the way they played it off is so well done. Seth MacFarlane is really reserved and really good in the show. I think. I think he plays a really good leading leading actor, kind of like that. That um. That you know, it's it's the Picard character, uh, the the captain that leads everyone, but also takes a backseat when he needs to. Yeah, He's, right. That's why it works because it's such an ensemble. Yeah, I don't know how Picard became this like deity, but it he only works surrounded by them by his team. Like, put yeah. him anywhere else, and you're just like, who are you? Go away. Like, that is actually one of my fears about Star Trek Picard. Oh, show. that's Seriously. just what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, he's a god now. Yeah, Seth MacFarlane's really comfortable on that show. Yeah, he is as as an actor. Yeah, I feel like he's more in his element there than he usually is. Yeah. Um, I did remember the other thing I did this week. I finished Rising of the Shield Hero, the anime. Oh, oh anime yes, nights. Yes. About that. Uh, oh, my wife loves that. I haven't been able to uh, catch it, but I hear it's amazing. It, it, it's really great when it starts. It lags around episode 18, and it doesn't pick back up again until about episode 23. But at episode, <laughs> okay, but at episode 23, notes. but at episode 23, so because what happens is it starts to lag as it reaches the end of an arc. Yeah, and actually. all of us were confused because we reached the end of episode 22, and it feels like it's the season finale. Well, did they go to the? Did they go to a bathhouse yet? That's how I know when they all relax and they're in the bathhouse. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they all have they all have little damp rags on their foreheads and they're just no, talking no, about they their have, adventure. I'm no, like, no, oh, we're, oh, we're winding down. We're winding and when down. When America, yeah. when America adapts, they turn into a clickbait into they, a, into a uh, what is it? Uh, what did they do in, uh, for Gurren in the bathhouse episode? In America, oh, oh it's a recap. Episode. It's a recap. It's a recap episode. episode. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. The Amer- Gurren Lagann is amazing. The American I love all the trigger of, stuff. The American <laughs> cut of Gurren Lagann, the bathhouse episode, is a uh, recap show, as a recap episode instead of an episode on its own. Right. Those are always Real the funniest. Weird. Yeah. They're, it's like, what are we doing here? We we always take bets. My wife and I were like, okay, how many episodes until the the bathhouse episode? <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen. She's like, I don't know. I think twenty five. It, it got like as close as you could get without actually doing a bathhouse thing, and then all of a sudden, episode twenty three started, and it was like beginning the next arc. And we were like, w- how 
can they? There's four episodes left this season, and hmm. what happens in that next arc opens up that world so much bigger than I anticipated, and it was the most excited I've been about the show, and then it ended, and I'm like, what? That's, how they, that's why they like, did it. That's <laughs> how they like got you. It's a tease for next season, basically. <laughs> if we get, like, another season hasn't been announced yet, Gosh. hopefully we're getting it, but, like, I, you know, you can yeah, always go to... The must be You can always go now. to the manga, so, yeah. but... Because they do, they do the simul... The simul... Simul cast. Simul cast. Simul cast. Yeah. Simul cast, yeah. yeah. Like keep the Japan's just like oh I guess all of it, okay I guess all these now we're doing it like yeah. it's you it's have to be huge. really careful what you invest in because like there's a lot of trash yeah did, um, you, did you hear that the uh, Toho said we're we're gonna make more anime Godzilla movies and I was like oh please don't please not in that <laughs> just not like style, that at least. Yeah. Uh, what else is Toho gonna do oh we opened up a pizzeria you guys we're not gonna do Godzilla anymore <laughs> Godzilla, we do Godzilla pizza. sized pizzas yeah um I knew that <laughs> so because we finished yeah. Rising oh, the Shield here are. we started Doctor Stone. Oh. Yeah, you. I, sh- I probably should have watched that. I should have watched that with you. Get on that. Yeah. Okay. There's only three episodes out so far, so get on it. There's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm only watching a, um, uh, One Piece. Yeah. God, and, uh, one Piece. Oh, now that I interrupted you, I can't remember. Man, one wh- Piece, the one where the one Black piece. Bulls. I forget that one. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the, their group is the Black, uh, Black Clover. Oh, oh okay. Black yeah, Clover. Black yeah. Clover, uh, One Piece, and there's one more I'm watching. Attack on Titan. Don't look at me. I no, Attack on Titan. I stopped. Yeah, there's yeah. so much. Like you said, there's so much. There I have is. to let my wife be like, okay, I watched six episodes. It's amazing. I'll rewatch them with you. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Real quick, have you ever watched Neon Genesis Evangelion? No, no. See, these are the. What were you saying? What were you saying about uh, the season? Doctor so, Stone. So, Doctor Stone. It's a 12 episode season. There are three episodes out. The concept is that there's just this like super smart high school dude, right? Uh, I think oh, of him as a anime. combination of a Reed Richards, Doctor Doom archetype, and he's good friends with a guy who's basically a Ben Grimm archetype. And in high school, th- th- it just starts off with him just like encouraging him to go tell the girl that he's in love with at high school that he loves her. As the Ben Grimm type is going to approach this girl, uh, the entire world of human beings is turned to stone. They oh. are turned to stone for thousands of years. And uh, then they come out of it, and it's the year 5,730. Five and uh, the... Oh boy, that t- that's the kind of twist that when you showed me that weird zombie show, and the uh-huh. girl's just like, oh, I'm just going to go to work, and she gets hit by a car. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the Ben Grimm guy, he wakes up, and he's just... All he's been thinking about, the only way he's kept sane, because he's consciously awake for thousands of years, frozen in stone. And he's only been thinking about, I have to stay awake so I can tell her I love her because I'm going to get out of the rock. And one day the rock core breaks around him and he goes and he finds her and she's still frozen in rock. But the, sci- the very smart uh, high schooler guy, he's been awake for six months and they start planning how to rebuild civilization. And he figures out that a chemical concoction is what made it so that they finally cracked out of the rock. They just need to figure out exactly what the compound is. So they spend a year love figuring it out time. and no. they find out exactly what it is to get people out of the rock. And so the rest of the show is them planning how are we going to be- rebuild civilization? Who do we decide to unrock first? It's like the opposite of um, uh, Death Note. Yeah. Like, who do we unfold? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, who's yeah. the best of us? Uh huh. Passengers. That and, insane. And, and, his, uh, yeah, and, right? and so, like, he's determined to, like, race society, like, civilization back to where it was as fast as he possibly yeah, can just to people. prove he could. Yeah. Uh, See, this is the kind of awesome. shit. This is the kind of shit that really disappointed me about the Godzilla anime. Like, you can do. The craziest thing. It takes place a million years in the future, and it's really boring. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> you, so, like, it, it's you can do the craziest things you ever want. It's so in bad. Anime. Yeah, yeah. And for the Godzilla animated animated movies, they were just kind of like, yeah, I guess just they, Godzilla's a lumbering. It's the worst Godzilla whatever. thing ever made, like yeah. for real. It's, waste, it's such a disappointment. They had a concept that like mankind had left Earth for a long time, a million years, a million years through a wormhole in space, and they come back, and all of Earth is a kaiju planet. Godzilla was like, but a, they a wasted huge. that concept. Godzilla is so big. For Godzilla, it's been like twenty thousand years or something like that. But for humanity, yeah, been it's been twenty. Twenty years. 20 okay. Years. Oh, I see. So like times, yeah. time shifted mm-hmm. and and changed. So Warhols. Earth is completely different, and it's just kind of boring and gray. And yeah, there's Starbucks whatever. everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> Starbucks just Star- it's just Godzilla smashing through Starbucks. <laughs> and then the great Starbucks overlords Good. live on their <laughs> golden the towers. Mothra Seattle. needs a latte. They yeah. spend the fir- they don't bring in any of the other kaiju. They just kind of make their own boring designs of mm. whatever. It was just so boring. yeah. I was 
what a disappointment, man. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what I was saying. Like, you could do the coolest shit with, with anime. Uh, also, Dr. Stone, because it's a 12-episode season, they dumped so much budget into the animation. The animation is gorgeous. Awesome. Nice. It, looks, it looks like an animated film you would go see in theaters. Love that. The animation quality is so it's high. It's really interesting, all these, 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 just the two things we talked about, the uh, House of X and now Dr. Stone, these these stories about characters declaring they know what's uh-huh. right. Yeah. Yeah. And every, what, no, no, you're wrong. It's, 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 it's these like these characters who have been oppressed suddenly saying, Oh no, no, you can't do that. No, yeah. no, I'm in charge. It's interesting. They're it's becoming really, the really, oppressors. It's really fascinating. Yeah. So just real quick and Dr. Stone, what I like is they, they, in the second episode expand on his ideology and he's like, uh, so are we not going to like, free people who we we believe could be dangerous or bad and he's like oh no we're gonna free everybody it's just we got to pick the best order to make sure that we're we're building the civilization as fast as we possibly it's almost can like a video because, game because we have to make the chemical it takes a lot to make the chemical for them because they have small resources uh at the moment and so like they have to be choosy as they start out and who's like going to be best for survival and who things makes like the that. best pizza we'll we'll unthaw well, so, him so like the first <laughs> okay. guy the first person they want to unrock is the girl that the guy wants to tell he's in love Boo. with but they Rocky realize pizza. but they are they <laughs> realize that they're actually on the bottom of the food chain and there are animals that can hunt and kill them now and so they actually decide to pick the like strongest guy around them at the time uh, and free him. work either yeah and that <laughs> that has if you do that has you ramifications and everyone so. is conscious throughout this whole thing no okay so it's implied oh, wouldn't that, that be horrible you it's see implied them that walking around only eh, you mike only, oh. <laughs> it's implied that only the two of them were conscious the whole time because oh, he was dedicated that seems unfair, to though he was dedicated That's to totally not how that works yeah he was dedicated to telling the girl that he wanted to that he loves her and uh the uh, genius, he was constantly trying to keep track of the days because he says that when he was in there, he was trying to fight back losing consciousness. And so it's implied that like if you slip into the darkness, you don't come back from it. Oh, I see. If everyone on the planet this happened to, I'm sure there's a couple people who remember. Like six. Out of the billions. Or seven. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, only three characters are are free at this no, moment. I know. But the third guy who yeah. got freed, he was just he was just asleep the whole time. Okay. I see. <laughs> he just, what, they he just was, ride in when they want it to be dramatic, I guess. Sure. Yeah. We, yeah. In, you know what? We don't know where the series is going, yeah. but we could introduce other characters who similar things have happened. To right. Them. Yeah. Um, all right. Shall we get into our... Last thing. Uh, oh we watched... Just, it's real quick. Uh, we watched episode nine of Swamp Thing and it was the anatomy lesson. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's very... Uh, the, the episode itself was, was fine. The anatomy lesson was awesome. Uh, our fic nerds watch episodes have been behind, but uh, we're now, actually we're going now. To, now we're well, we're we're going to be more on track, and so we'll release yeah. both of them very very soon. Yes. Yeah. to catch so look up. for those. One more. Um, all right, shall we get into it? Bread and butter. Bread yeah. and butter. And here's your bread and your butter. Here's your bread and butter. Hey, okay, not in my ear. Thank you. All right, then to start with, we do actually have some bad news. Oh boy, mm. what a week! It was a, it was a week for celebrity deaths. Um, mm. it has, it's been a Jesus, a couple months for celebrity deaths. Yeah. It feels like yeah. Um, but yeah, so Rutger Hauer passed away earlier this week. Mm. Uh, yes. famed actor Rutger Hauer passed away at the age of seventy five. Um, you know him from Blade Runner, Hubble with Shotgun, Lady mm-hmm. Hawk, uh, Batman Begins. He's in an Xbox game called Observer. Gallivant. Uh, Gallivant. Uh, he is a, a an incredible character. Actor. The Hitcher. The Hitcher, he, he, yeah, he's a great. The Hitcher yeah. movie's great. Yes, yeah. uh, wonderful character actor who um, passed away. It's very sad. I, yeah. I, I was a fan. I, I saw he was. He showed up in Gallivant uh, briefly as King Richard's brother. Yeah. It was really funny. Yeah, Blade Runner is uh, one of my favorite movies. That's a that's yeah. a big old bummer, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, next we have uh, Russie Taylor passed away. She was uh, most probably known as the voice of Minnie Mouse. She's mm-hmm. also a voice on a Simpsons as well. Yeah, she was yeah. Sim- voice of Simpsons. Um, and she's seventy five. She was also seventy five. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, she, yeah. Uh, she was. She, you were just telling me she was married to one of the voice actors for Mickey Mouse. She was married to uh, the voice actor of Mickey Mouse since 1977. And I hear they loved each other very, very much. Mm. He died in 2009. Now she's passed away. Yeah, like That's I hear stories like she he would walk into the recording booth and she would say like there he is my knight in shining armor like, oh that's it's, cute. it's very well known that yeah. those two were just like hopelessly in love oh that's adorable mm-hmm. um she she was a very prominent voice actor voice actress i'm sure you guys have heard her uh, outside of just minnie mouse but yeah. i just recently saw like like the new minnie mouse like design like her singing a song like it was mm-hmm. on twitter like it's a recent thing and i'm like that's a shame man yeah yeah, yeah. Is, what's the new redesign like? Is it like in the 90s? It's like when the classic. All, it's, the like Looney old, Tunes, it's like old school. The Looney Tunes in the 90s where they all had their backwards hats. No, it's, it's, like, it looks oh. like, like <laughs> the, the flesher old design, but like modern. 
Mo- like like postmodern, if you will. Postmodern. I'm not artsy. Ooh. You know I what? Actually, know, yeah. I, w- I think. I don't like the term, but yeah, I think you would have to describe yeah. it as postmodern. Well, we're like we're sliding into post postmodern, but that's a conversation for a different Damn. day. Yeah. Holy cow! Apocalyptic modern. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a bummer. And this one, this one is just for me. I don't know if you guys heard this, but um, Jeremy Kemp uh, passed away this week at the age of eighty-four. Uh, he is most well known in the nerd circles as playing Robert Picard, who is Jean Luc Picard's brother uh, from the episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is probably one of the best episodes of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Uh, he, you know, it's about how him and him and Jean Luc are estranged, and he runs the vineyard. You see the vineyard in Star Trek Picard. That's his vineyard. Um, he he owned that vineyard. He was running the Picard legacy and the Picard wine. And um, so he got Jean Luc, and then the other guy got Robert. Yeah, Jean Luc uh, and Robert. It's Ro- Robert. It's Robert. Robert. There, thank you. It's Robert. Robert with English accents <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yes. always English. We never. We'll never get it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll Robert. The future yeah. is mysterious. Um, if 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 <laughs> if. Uh, if uh, Picard's ever from Britain, he'll just be in like the worst American Southern accent. Oh. Like, what are you? Oh God! <laughs> you just, no, next I thing come you... from Yorktown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then it's like, so where are you born? California, California. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and it's like, but you have a German ac- accent. Yahoo! <laughs> yeah. Jesus, it's it's interesting because oh, it's it's, it's sad because I I really like that episode. It's, it's one a good of, episode. One I remember favorites. it. It's yeah. the one. It's the episode where you start to realize that the next generation is becoming more serialized. Um, because it is directly um, dealing with what happened with Picard as as, as the cutest, um, and it's such a great episode. So I was really sad to see that that pass. It had a really profound effect on me seeing yeah. his death. I was like, oh shit, mm. that's yeah. that's actually a lot harder for me than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so he, he, the character unceremoniously was killed off screen in Star Trek Generations, but you know, in a fire, in a fire, he died in a car crash. Unless we talk he about generations. A, it was just a fire, wasn't it? I thought I thought it was a car crash. It was a fire. Oh, it was a fire. They him, died, him, died, and his, him and his him and his nephew, son. His son, yeah. yeah oh, it's a double a yikes. And it's like the worst oh. scene ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is happening? And I I like generations, but I was like, oh, I didn't need to do that. Yeah, it was so weird. It yeah. that movie is just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we move on to some happier news, some comics news. Well, I guess this one might be. It depends on your mileage with this one. Uh oh. Um, this is. I need gas for this mileage. There's only really one comic book n- related news that I could find. I probably missed a lot of stuff, but I try to keep it on, keep on it. But Chrononauts is getting a sequel comic. Yeah, um, this is cool. Hmm. I liked Chrononauts a lot. It was yeah. a four issue miniseries by Sean Gordon Murphy and Mark Millar. Hell yeah. Um, basically, uh, can I? Uh, sorry, Mike. Have you read uh, uh, Chrononauts? I have not. Chrononauts <laughs> is a, is a is a fun one about like what if they dealt with. Time travel as they did space travel. I mean, I put it together. That's yeah. a good time title. travel. I but really it's also Chrono. I, I was a there. reality I was TV you. show. Yeah, it's a reality TV uh, show. And so like they film it as they filmed the as they filmed the the launch of the Apollo and uh-huh. like, things like that. But the two guys who are the pilots are like, what if we let's like change the world so we're the kings of it? What basically? if we stayed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, God, are all comics just power fantasy? Is yeah. it? I mean, I know it is, but like, <laughs> Mark, did we have to lean into it so hard? Because it was so. Mark Millar yeah. is. Yes. Okay. A lot of Mark Millar's comics yes. are power fantasies. Okay. Um, but it's so, so, been the theme today. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All of them are just like, what if we? What if I invented hot pockets? <laughs> uh-huh. And you're like, wow, well, you know what, what are we even doing? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. What if uh, I invented? Like, what if you did? Like, looking ahead, I don't think that's changing. Um, <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> all right. So, Chrononauts. It's going to be called Chrononauts Future Shock. It will be written by Mark Millar, uh, but not Sean Gordon is not returning. It's going to be uh, art by Eric Canete. Can- mm-hmm. uh, all four issues are going to be released on October 30th. This is weird. Yes. Why not just make it like a graphic novel? Why yeah, give us four single issues? That's a waste of paper. It's it's the net, extra paper. It's the Netflix binge model because Netflix is putting it out through Image. But, but it's comics. the binge model through comics. They've never done this before. Right. It doesn't work. I don't... I'll, no, 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 no. See, I would buy those four issues, but I don't want to buy them all at once because it's a lot of money. That's, yeah. Like Netflix should know that the whole point it works is it's streaming. They should release it like in PDF form or something. Like yeah. not, not, it should not even be uh, hard, like a paperback at Dude, all. they should just like... Oh man! If Netflix does do comics with Mark Miller, they can just like, hey, you could read the comic right here on Netflix only. Well, but that's, like, that'd be cool. This is Netflix. This is Netflix uh, Im- through Image. It's just weird. Like, man, just put a graphic novel out. Yeah, yeah. don't put a graphic right. novel. Four issues because yeah. that because Netflix releases their whole seasons as one. There you go. It's like, hey, here's your whole thing. That's of fine. That's I why. That's D- why that's weird. I yeah. buy a Stranger Things DVD. I don't buy eight separate DVDs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's the that's the one to one. Yeah. Um. So, but the but the synopsis reads: Chrononauts Future Shock is a sequel to Chrononauts created by Mark Millar and original artist Sean Gord Murphy. After man's first televised step into the past, uh, Corbin Quinn and Danny uh, Riley now go in the opposite direction and try to reach the future. But something is stopping them, and they have to find out why. Why does the Earth not seem to have a future? The answer lies with the man who taught them everything. 
So that's Ooh. the plot. It does sound, seem interesting. I did really like Chrononauts. I did too. I'd be interested to read this when it's out in trade. Yeah, yeah I'm and just, again, uh, go ahead, Ben. Uh, I'm just surprised that Mark Millar is actually going back to a property and he's continuing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm he's looking at it you, Reborn. It is only excuse me, four issues, though. So it that, is four that's issues. Easy. And he returned yeah. to Kick Ass many times. So yeah, this is but, not the first time. Yeah, but I'm looking at Reborn. I'm looking at that's Huck. Like, I'm looking at. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. at Huck is the one I want to know. There's one. another one that had a that said volume one that was really good and I really liked it. And okay. I'm not getting it. It's okay. All no, four, well. all six issues will be released at the same day soon. Jeez. <laughs> Damn it. Like why at the same time? That's dumb. Again, That's if, it dumb. Was like, if it was like Just tell them the release date six weeks later. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. yeah it's uh, released today. Yeah. It's, waiting. it's like what? Oh, they're all out. This it's is like perfect. hey, so you know that thing that you really like? Yeah, oh yeah, it came out like two months ago. Son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um this is so weird. And and Chrononauts is getting like a Netflix like movie or TV show or something. Well, no. Right? So what happened was there is officially no Netflix produced thing happening because Universal still has the rights to the property. Oh, they all sold before. Yeah. So Universal was working on working on something, but we haven't heard anything about it. So the rights will probably lapse, and we'll see a Netflix thing soon. So a couple of years probably. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's kind of where it sits. Cool. And most of them, th- that was released at the time where everything that Mark Millar did. I mean, it still is. But like at the time, everyone was snatching up Mark Millar books to make into other properties. Um, yeah. So. You know, we'll see if that ever happens. I'm still waiting on that Descender movie, also. Oh, um, uh, give it time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Any right. more power fantasies? Yeah, Watchmen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, sh- uh, Moving on to Watchmen. Wait, what news is there, Watchmen? This oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Uh, this was uh, interesting. Again, there wasn't a lot because Comic Con was last week, kind of overloaded the internet. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Sorry. Cats happened last week and overloaded the internet. Ah, uh, boo. <laughs> just, just uh, we don't need to do this anymore, everybody. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't hear? This is the official pause pause cast now. No. The pause cast? Stop. Yeah, it's not a podcast. We stop. We spent gonna, too much time. I'm going to chrono not back in time and keep <laughs> yeah. on releasing that trailer. So, Watchmen uh, revealed this week that the president in the universe, and now I'm going to talk about it in, in a strange way, but so the president of the Watchmen universe currently is Robert Redford. President Robert Redford. Um, the actor? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Who's the vice president? Jerry Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Wonderful. That'd be, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, so it's, it, is, it is Robert Redford, uh, who is the president, and he has been the president since the 90s. So mm-hmm. he's the longest running American president, um, and it's going to deal with the idea of like how, how a, a well-meaning liberal, what kind of what kind of that looks like if he's president for too long interesting god it sounds like house of x oh yeah. god it sounds like <laughs> dr said, stone oh my enough. goodness this is why i said that. i don't think yeah. the theme's changing. yeah right yes oh yeah. now i couldn't corroborate corro- corroborate this uh with anyone else but um clickbait news articles i couldn't find an official source mm-hmm. but a lot of people are hearing that the, that it will be played by robert redford right yeah i saw that too so i couldn't find I mean, an official source you, of this one I think you have to. I think so because too. otherwise you wouldn't make it Robert. Redford. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you would have gotten yeah. who you could have got yeah. and made it. You would have been like Wesley Snipes is the president and he's Terry since Cruz. the nineties. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. You would have just picked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so right. I, it's got to be. Otherwise, that's just. I mean, it's, it's cool that they want to carry that over from the comics and everything. I was just surprised because Robert Redford was like, I'm retiring. Yeah. Uh, about two years ago. And then and he then showed he up shot in Endgame. Endgame. Well, <laughs> and so Old Man and the Gun was shot after he you shot Endgame. Mm, you don't okay. retire mm. from acting. Acting is not difficult. Like, yeah. He's retiring from showing up on time uh-huh. and doing that's his a, lines. Tell yeah. that like, to Jack Nicholson. That's what I, like, I don't understand when people say, like, no, they'll, they'll back a Brinks truck to his front lawn. And be like, Will you be an end game? He's like, yeah, I'll show up in a day. Oh, I have to wear a three-piece suit and say, Easy. like, Hail Hydra. Like, it's, it's not. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. He's not. You're not doing Butch Cassidy and the yeah. Sundance Kid, he, man. You're not. You he's know. not a lead actor. In his, yeah. in his defense, he was. He, you know, what, what Sparks is referring to. Yeah, uh, he was retiring off of Old Man and the Gun, and then Endgame came out. But to his credit, he forgot he shot Endgame. Yeah. Uh, way before he shot Old Man and the Gun, so that makes he sense, was just yeah. kind of like. I just. I think it's easy. Like, hey, man, you want to do a cameo in just this one episode? Day. Yeah. Yeah. You, I don't like people. Like, you retire from a desk job. Do a shit. <laughs> like, you retire from a job where it's a nine to five, where like you are not. I am not going to go to this building anymore. Yeah. You don't retire from someone being like, hey, you want to hang out for like three days? It's gonna be in Hawaii. <laughs> you get a lot um, of money. You're gonna be Adam Sandler's dad, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, just kind of hang. Yeah, bring your kids, whatever. Oh no, tons of money. This is probably. And we'll, <laughs> and we'll shoot like that. You don't retire from that. This I don't understand why Betty yeah. White hasn't retired. That's what I mean. Uh-huh. Like, like you want to be on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, I don't know. Sure, whatever. Have you seen Spider Man yet? The new Spider Man? No, I am. I am Marvel. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's cool. I am Marvel fatigued. That's cool. I do not okay. care anymore. Uh, the, well, the, the big cameo the at the news. end. At the end, it was filmed on a 
green screen in like yeah. his office or something, yeah. in like some office. Yeah. Like yeah. it was yeah, so nice. in their office, in, in their Marvel office. Studios office yeah. building. They brought him in. They're like, here, just sit here. That's yeah, cool. I'm I'm totally with you. By the way, I'm I'm after Spider Man Far From Home. I was like, I, I don't need, need to see I need another time. one. We got it here from after Endgame. I was like, no, this is. I have a good feeling. By the time I don't need to start this up again right away. Now I know myself. I'm by the time Black Widow rolls around, I'll be back on board, and I'll probably just need to see Doctor Strange. And oh, that's I'm so it. excited for Doctor Strange. Yeah, that's what I mean. But 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 then Boy. again, I don't care. Yeah, like I, I'll just I'll watch it on a plane. It's yeah. weird. I don't know. My mind is scrambled. No, because I feel of you. A, a decade. Endgame yeah. is, yeah. is and then we're right back big, into it. It's a big like, thing. Yeah. You really needed me to. Ex- you gotta let me exit. I'm just yeah. glad we have at least a year. It's like, come on, baby, give if, me 15 more minutes. Like if, I get some if Gatorade. Black Widow. <laughs> <push-ups>, <laughs> yeah. like, if Black Widow's Lord. November, I might feel like. All right, guys. Yeah. Again, yeah. like I, I don't, I will never feel superhero fatigue, but I'm like, all right, you got to slow it down at least. Oh yeah. I was gonna say, you know, we talked about this, but. We're pretty sure Kevin Feige won the Spider-Man Far From Home in November. Yeah, like the Get one two punch of Endgame and sure. Endgame that's a Sony July. problem. Yeah, like that, that was too that would have been uh, yeah that would work. Yeah. It's yeah. like, hey, can we get Spider-Man later? No, it has to be right after Endgame. Can, and we have to release we... a trailer right after Endgame. It's like, <laughs> Kevin Feige, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. It's like, can we wait? Uh, can we wait a little bit? Well, if, I think people are tired. If we're right, 2021 is going to feel like a lot. Yeah, it is. If there's much. a Spider-Man movie that year too, yeah, that's four Marvel Studio films and a couple of shows. Do not care about any of the shows either, which is weird. Now, speaking of. Uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home was the first Spider-Man movie to hit a billion dollars. Is it really? What is? Oh, I thought Lord. that's so weird. Spider-Man Three. Oh, it just made a lot of money. It made a lot of money, but yeah. it was Spider-Man: Far From Home was the first movie. To, I mean, first you Spider-Man think about like everybody who went and saw Endgame. More people are like, I kind of want to f- watch the follow-up. I'm not not people like us who have been entrenched for people, decades. No, people, people love who Spider-Man people though. who are like, oh yeah, I went and saw oh, a event. couple of the Avengers. And uh, that Endgame one was real good. Oh, the Spider-Man movies following that? I'll go see that yeah, right that, now. That British kid. <laughs> yeah, yep. so, so that, this is you know part of the news. Um, Spider-Man Far From Home is the is now the highest grossing Spider-Man film. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is now the lowest. The best Spider-Man That's movie. So the weird. Oh. Well, ain't that just the way it is? Yeah. Well, so really quick for anecdote, there's uh, a... Um, a husband and wife do at my work. They're also they come to me for like a lot of the in depth stuff, but they casually go. Um, they agree that Spider Man and Spider Verse is the best one. Mm-hmm. But his wife is like, man, I really love that uh, Far From Home movie. That Far From Home is like one of my top Spider movies. I'm like, oh, honey, that I don't I don't agree with that. I just kept quiet because I was on my I, way. To, no. I was on my way to lunch. She was coming back, and I was like, oh no, just, just you calm didn't down. Throw down in the I, hallway. Well I, well, I wasn't gonna throw down with her. I was just gonna be like, Ooh. you would have if she was like, Amazing Spider Man Two is tops. You didn't tops wanna, blue. I would have broke yeah. through the <laughs> wall. Just like somebody say something awful. <laughs> Everyone would have. There would have been a mountain from yeah. Comic Con. No, Everyone from Comic Con hears <laughs> the building. Would have just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the it's like the end of End Game. The catch, <laughs> the catch trailer just like all yeah. of a sudden crashes oh. the internet and everyone starts running. He said, Amazing Spider Man Two is the better. It's crazy. Oh man, what a nightmare. No, but Batman shows up. <laughs> Spider Man swinging on nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Far from home was. I mean, I still like Far from Home, like but it's, from home. it's it's like mid for me. Mm-hmm. Spider Man never did it for me. Yeah, I never was like, yeah, I want to worship a hero that just can't get his stuff together. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> like, yeah. I was it's like, the Marvel. I was like, where's Batman? I need Batman in my life. Yeah, I was but, just. Yeah, I was just. Only that, not oh, only that, though. Sorry, sorry, but uh, not only that, but now all four, all three Marvel Cinematic Universe films hit a billion dollars. The, this year, a billion dollars yeah. this year. Yeah, but uh, my Lion King's on its way. <laughs> At least it wasn't the, the coworker who hasn't seen any of the movies comes up to me and says, "Hey Ben, I was thinking about seeing that new what's that Avengers?" I'm like, "You mean Endgame?" He's like, "Yeah. What do I need to see before that?" I'm like, "Well, did you see Infinity War? No. Did you see Avengers? No. I want to no. say. I want to <laughs> say. I want to say. My mom saw Spider-Man: Far From Home and then went to see Avengers: Endgame. Why? <laughs> she had not seen any other Marvel film except for Iron Man. What? <laughs> and she got it and loved them both. It's good. It's it's good filmmaking. Story okay, that's yeah, fine. Mom like, sounds like a you fine can lady. Do it that way. <laughs> so, I, so, I'm sa- so I'm saying, hey, yeah. apparently I like your it doesn't attitude. Matter. Yeah. <laughs> you can. I don't, I don't know if you should, you but you hey, I was telling her, I was like, as long as you enjoy it, yeah, right. right. Watch whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. just want. I just want to quickly. So, Aladdin, this. yes, made a billion dollars. <laughs> Toy Story Four. A lot of people. Toy Story Four. But a lot of people are saying. A lot of like people are speculating that Lion King is actually going to come short. Mm. Um, I haven't checked. It made over. Good. It made half already. It disappointed. It, it, it was supposed to do much better this weekend than it, than it did. Mm. So because of that, a lot of people were like, oh, maybe it won't. It might come just a little close. Uh, yeah. My, I told Ryan this. My dad recently watched all of the Marvel films that aren't Infinity War, mm-hmm. but uh, and he'd seen a handful of them. But he he had a list of like you know when they came out and things, mm-hmm. and, and he was like. I just watch them how I felt like watching them. So oh. we just go from Winter Soldier to Guardians of the Galaxy 2 to Ant-Man <laughs> 2. <laughs> it's, not like, 
<laughs> Avengers. It's just like reading a bunch of comics out of order. Like it's not like you could. Yeah, no, it, it's not like you could. They do a good job to kind of your brain might might be able to put them in uh-huh. order. Like it was just it was funny because like he's sitting there with the list. He has access to all of them, and he's like, "Yeah, I just went with what I felt like." Well, this we live <laughs> in the age of sequels and prequels, so our brains are trained to be like, "Oh, what, what if Guardians Two was the first one? Sure. And then Guardians One was the prequel." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it doesn't not work. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so Brandon, mm-hmm. Spider Man Far From Home did officially reach a billion. Yes. Oh, is, so that so that means the rights get to stay with Marvel. Is That's a billion? Is I know. A billion I know. Even cool anymore? Yes. Well, so you just the, said like nine things that reached a billion. Yeah. So like, oh, a, is that the new? They're all Disney. So there was a, and to your point, by by the way, if you go to the top 36 now uh, highest grossing films of all time are unoriginal movies, with the exception of Titanic and Avatar. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so number 37 is... is Titanic it? an original movie? Yeah. All right. Te- oh, technically. It's technically an original I'm curious, I'm curious, oh, yeah, okay. It's a Counts. historical... Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is an original movie, even though it's about real people in a real place. All right, touche. <laughs> um, the... Uh, sh- what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So there, what Ben was referring to is that there was this really stupid... I'm going to say it here because I want everyone who listens to the show to know it. This I really it. stupid rumor yeah. going around that Sony would take the rights away from Marvel uh, if Spider-Man Far From Home didn't hit a billion dollars. That was not true. It was debunked many times, and it came from the comic skate corner of the internet. Mm. So all of you guys... Who believed yeah. it? I'm sorry. All the all well, the big websites also were like, "Hey guys, don't pay attention to this one. This one." Yeah. Fun. What what was true is that Sony's contract was ending with Far From Home. Yes, that and, is true. And then they re- had to renew. Yes, that was a thing. But it wasn't like it wasn't a based stipulation on of yeah. there wasn't a stipulation in the contract that said if it doesn't do this, we're pulling out. Hey, yeah. uh, we gotta pe- rely on Mobius. Hey, pe- <laughs> hey, people who write articles do better. Yeah. And oh, no I, one's good at the job anymore. Oh my god, that's gone. Oh my god, yeah. I just, I just real tangent, real quick tangent. Um, I was on this page that, that I'm that I'm just uh, on uh, on Facebook, and they were like, Sorry. "I, uh, what do you guys think of this?" Headline was, uh, "Who's the Asian actress who plays Cassandra Kane?" It doesn't matter. The Asian actress who plays Cassandra Kane. Oh, uh, Rufio's sister. Uh, play, is cast as Batgirl in the new Birds of Prey. Yeah. And it, so the click. So what the article, what the headline says is. This Asian person is playing Barbara Gordon. It's just like anybody who wouldn't know mm-hmm. is just like, oh, blah, 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 POC, SJW, whatever. And like, I was like, I really hate shit like this. First off, she was cast a year ago. Second off, she's playing Cassandra Kane, yeah. who has at one time been Batgirl, but yes. we do not know if she's going to be Batgirl in the movie. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, you're right. And, but she, the she had casting's the costume, all wrong. She yeah. had the costume with the, the full face mask. Yes. Yeah, that Batgirl. Yeah. And we don't know if she's going to be Batgirl in the movie. Uh, and so like this person was like, this happened today, and look how angry people are. It's like, shut up, oh, wait, shut up. Yeah. You, the, about the misleading uh, title. Yeah, I um, also, also saw that because I because I commented on something similar. I was like, oh, uh, this new girl get cast, and I'm like, this happened a year ago. Yeah. why is this happening just now again? It's yeah, weird. right. So dumb. Anyway. Uh. Moving on. Well, like yeah. everybody getting upset when Halle Bailey was cast as Ariel, and it's like they were talking about casting Zendaya a while ago. Right. Like yeah. nobody was getting upset at the time. Yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, everyone needs a ship in a bottle. That's my theory. <laughs> like when you do your taxes, you get a ship in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, no, and 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 it's like, oh, I'm really mad at the casting of Ariel. And then we go, is your ship in the bottle done? And they go, well, no, I haven't even. You got, before you could, you gotta finish <laughs> you the gotta ship in the bottle. bottle. You gotta go. You finish the ship in the bottle. And then like people who who get who have like good work ethic can get it. The ship in the bottle be done and be like, what do you think about the Little Mermaid? Like, I don't know. What, I'm, I don't have time for them. Working on ship in the bottle. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's just kind of you know, and it will just. I think it'll even out. It's my right. ship in the bottle. I've always think, been curious about. Hold those. on. Yeah. I think you just cured the world. I think so. We just have to. When you do your taxes, here's your you government ship, you billions of the bottle. Billions of glass bottles. Show it, then you can start commenting on things. Look, here's my ship in the bottle. It is done. Now I get to say stupid shit now. Guys, exactly. Guys, donate to our Patreon. We'll send you ships, ships and bottles. Ships and bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Mike, we're Mike's ship in a bottle. How, do you actually? How do you build those? In, you have like, to like it's, it's like tweezers. And, so so yeah. you you make it very. Th- so you make the whole thing. Yeah. It's very thin, and the the uh, the the sails fold down. Oh, you build so it and then put it and in. Then you slide it in, and then you put like a hook in, and you pull the oh. sails up. Because I thought it was like a weird thing where you like know micro that. put it in like nope. one at no, a time. You, no, think, no, 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 no. So I was wrong. We all learned something today. Yeah, this, Look is at that. Why, this is why Mike doesn't complain on the internet. Yeah. He does ships in a bottle. <laughs> there you go. That's how this works. Because <laughs> I, I, okay. I knew that part. You had to like take a hook and I like, put yeah. the sails up. Yeah. But everything else, like the hole and the rest of the ship, it's like, how the fuck did they do that yeah, tiny yeah. little hole? That's how they do it. an educational yeah. podcast. Huh. Okay. All right, then the, the more you know. Yeah. The last piece of news before we get into our trailer talk, um, which we won't do yet, oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. is just kind of a cool thing. Um, Criterion. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Criterion yeah. uh, 
I was hearing some rumblings about this and I was sending text to Sparks like, hey, this is weird. Uh, Criterion has announced a a complete collection of Blu-rays for the original Godzilla movies, all 15, mm-hmm. huh. which makes Criterion the first uh, ever American ri- American distributor to have the rights to all 15 of those original movies. And I've seen like all of the like the the posters that like they're putting for each of the movies, and they're all by like like yeah. Becky Cloonan, like Becky comic Clunan, book artists yeah. and stuff. And like, are they good? They're, they're beautiful. Art movies. Adams. Okay. Art Adams. Yeah. They're okay. All... Criterion Collection can get into itself a lot. I, don't, I agree. Like, I, it can go full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, mm, to, to his credit, there are, I don't like the Godzilla vs. Megalon one okay. at all. Okay. Um, but I do like a lot of them. Okay. So, yeah, so it's going to re- retail about 175 bucks. So, you know, wait till the sale. Because um, <laughs> there's a sale all the time. Wait, wait 175 bucks yeah, for, for all 15. Yeah. So that's that's not like that's like it's that's not like bad. eleven dollars. Well, Fifteen Blu-rays. A movie. That's, that's actually, eleven dollars yeah. a movie. All of them completely remastered, new um, new special features. Now some of them don't have the English the dubs. The scroll. Some of them don't have the English dubs because the rights of the English dubs are a nightmare. Uh, however, for the ones that do have an English dub, um, there is there is one uh, Godzilla film that will be available in America for the first time in Japanese and that's Godzilla vs. King Kong. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. King Kong vs. Godzilla has never had a Japanese release in America. Mm-hmm. It's only ever had a dub uh, and Criterion will be the first people to have the original. That's so awesome. So the ones that won't have their dubs are, uh, it will only have dubs of King Kong vs. Godzilla, Invasion of Astro Monsters, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. Megalon, uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Terra Mechagodzilla, and the Godzilla 56, the hey, American wait, version. Those are all made. dubbed? Those are the ones that will have dubs. So half more everything than half. Everything, that, well, everything half. that isn't that won't have its dubs. They'll so be like subbed. Godzilla vs. Mothra will only be Japanese. They're version, not all subbed. But you can... Yeah. That, right. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're all... They will all have a sub... They will all have subs. Oh, thank yes. God. I thought that... I was like... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's the worst no, thing no, no. I've ever heard. No, yeah, so I'm, not, yeah. I'm like, don't buy that. I don't even yeah. know anything about it. Don't buy they it. Are, okay, okay, they yeah. are all going to be in the original Japanese. Oh, but then they have the dubs. But then those those specific films will also have Amer- the American Okay, cuts. that's right. what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to yeah. get my Jackie Chan collection together with all the original... This Golden one, the Harvest. Godzilla, Mech Godzilla yeah. one's dope. Yeah, I like that, that one I love that one. Yeah, there's some cool I, designs. Um, so there's a, this, that was really cool. Um, I recently just got all the Godzilla films. Um, a lot of these films have not been uh, available in America for a very, very long time, and I'm super tempted uh, just because on Blu-ray, some of these have the original Japanese, which I've never seen before, like King Kong vs. Godzilla. I just you said. said it's 175? 175, yeah. That's not that bad. It's not, not that, that bad. bad. When you think of Blu-rays are 20, 30 bucks. Like, no, it could have yeah. been like 320. It could right. very easily have been 320. Now yeah. that said, uh, and it comes with a booklet that's got some behind the scenes stuff also. Now that, now that said, um, Criterion always has a holiday 50% off sale. Wait for it. So, Ooh. happy holidays. Oh, and actually, there's currently a fifty percent off sale going on for Criterion. Oh, so this this set won't be available till November, October, October. Okay. Uh-huh. So you know, if you want to wait, just wait for the fifty percent off sale. But if not, it's not a bad deal, honestly. If it's no, not, excited. I'm really yeah. impressed. I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these films have never made the transfer to Blu-ray. We haven't seen yeah. some of these uh, versions. I hope they look good. That's going to be interesting. There's oh, man, so many extras are to it. Oh, yeah. it's Criterion. I'm not even... Criterion makes some primo... The zippers. You're going to see no, all the zippers. Criterion makes some There's real good Blu-rays. Yeah. Criterion makes some real good Blu-rays. Yeah, I'm super Largest Godzilla this. collection ever. ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This has never been done before. You know they're probably... It, it, this seems like they're going to do like a part two. And What's the box set look like? Is it like? Is it just a box set? Or is it like... It's in the shape of a, of a no, it's, it uh, is, it pagoda is just, that you can knock over. It, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just a box set, but it's got new artwork. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, kind of cool techno artwork. How do you feel about that? Do you, do you guys like the box sets that are like in a thing that's a thing? Depends. Like, it, it's yeah, that's what I case. mean. Like, yeah. is it, it like, oh, this is all the Star uh, Wars, and they're in a Star Destroyer box, or like a Death Star, and you can't put it anywhere, and like a I, circular... Yeah, oh. yeah it's... Right. It depends. It really yeah. depends. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like the, like when the like uh Brandon, your Avengers set, yeah. your Blu-ray set, my phase one. Th- yeah, when it's in this the briefcase with the test rack. But it's easily like, is storable. That... It's easily storable. Yeah. Like yeah. That's like, right the there behind the Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah. Thing. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Or my Harry, little big. Or my Harry Potter set. Which or, is, is the test rack in there? Yeah. 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 I have that out. <laughs> yeah. I'll show it to you after we're done. Well, something like that. I've seen a suitcase. Yeah. Something like that. That's really cool, but. I mean, I guess if you're a huge fan of it, like the Walking Dead season two special collection, you had to take the screwdriver and pop the the zomp, the walker in the eye. Then that you I got remember the, that set, the yeah. box, mm-hmm. the, yeah. the box came out. Yeah, it I, depends. It really just depends. I I have I, I, I almost, don't like spending a lot of money though. So yeah, I'll put yeah. it this way: I almost never think that any of those elaborate and ornate box sets that are usually like a thing in a thing, mm-hmm. as Mike said, I don't <laughs> think that they are ever uh, visually pleasing enough. 
that you want them on your shelf to begin with as like its own thing. And it's like cool that I have all of the things that are inside of it, but the thing itself sitting on the shelf is like, yeah. They never, yeah, they always, it's always, it's either like stuff that we can infuse and it looks good on a infinity wall picture spread out, which no one has, but it's never something like, like, it's never, uh, the glamour shots are never in a DVD collection. Oh, yeah. It's and always it's like, just by This itself. is where it's going to be. Like, like make something that will pop on my wall yeah. of DVDs. Yeah, I mean, I've got a couple, sure. of, it's, I got it's a couple like, of box sets up it's, there. It's people not eating at their own restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, you own a restaurant, one day, go, get seated, do the whole see thing. See how like, it is. See how it is. It's, yeah. it's fascinating how people just are yeah. like, no, I want to make things. There's and a, it's going to be, a, it's, it's, it's in Coulson's gun that he shoots Loki with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm do oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The box sets I prefer, like I know they did Die Hard in the Nakatomi Plaza kind of thing. Like, <laughs> the like, box building. Yeah. yeah it's like, okay. I, I, the boxes I go for normally are just kind of like the boxes that you are easily storable. Like I, I've Just got, like big DVD cases. See, I've got things like I'm that. looking up there, right? And I'm, and, and I'm, uh, if you guys can't see at home, it's just, beautiful wall of dvds thank you and, I, and i'm and i'm seeing it's on my uh, instagram th- the winners star trek lord of the rings dragon ball oh the big ones boom yeah done or they, or they did their job and uh, i think never the other ones look, look what's tucked away in the very back well, that's behind a a giant green lantern we have an organized is the avengers yet. but you did uh-huh. that but that got organized <laughs> yeah. first See, and so it, it's, 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 right. it's it's more aesthetically pleasing and easier to do for sure the other ones that i'll i'll give praise to are the stranger things sets that come from target where they're made to look like old school vhs's but they're yeah, blu-ray yeah. season box sets those are cool that's yeah. some okay. good pack yeah, and, they're, so and they're small but, but that fits that works right it does no I agree but with you. You look at that Star Trek 50th anniversary set. It's just a, it's just a box. You slip it in there. It's there. Yeah. I, like I, I don't mind that either. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it's yeah. easily storable, I also don't mind mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, that said, Ryan, you said something about there could be a part two. I don't think so no. for this Godzilla thing because Aww. again, the the rights to Godzilla in America are a nightmare, and the fact that Criterion was able to do this is a miracle. Yeah. Well, it's only because Criterion got the rights to all of these films, which they don't have for some of the later they have, era stuff. They don't have for any of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Because Cri- Criterion was able to snatch up because they're older. Give yeah. it twenty more years. Yeah. Okay. Um, all I right. Can wait. It'll be spine two thousand. <laughs> yeah. This is spine. This the whole thing is that this is spine one thousand. So for Criterion. People, for Criterion. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, we are going to go into trailers. Awesome. But Mike will see you on the other side. I will see you on the other Whoa. side. Whoa. I hate trailers. <laughs> <laughs> and now that Mike has left the room, bye, Mike. We're going to talk about some trailers, but real quick. Just want to give shout outs to Downright Nerdy Podcast. Yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Because I forgot to mention them at the top. And Downright Nerdy, they put out a video thanking a whole bunch of people that they've come to know in this community. And we were Number very uh, we were honored first. to be one of the people uh, shared in that video and plugged along with our picture in his Instagram post and everything. So shout outs to Michael Carls and Riley Sloan over I love at Downright them. They're Nerdy the best. Podcast. They're fantastic. Yep. We are talking of future collaborations, of course. You've already kind it's, of teased a Star Wars thing. It's so, so crazy. Actually, uh, uh, if you remind me after we record, I might have another suggestion. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, th- they were talking about, like, yeah, like the fake nerds are like a big influence on us. And like, we're nothing. So like that <laughs> yeah. that gives me like such happiness to think like someone really likes us. Like it's hard for me to imagine that. I know. Like, how, uh, the who we are. It's the stuff. thing that Kevin Smith always said, you know, just yeah. make it. Someone's going to find yes. it and be inspired by it. And, you, I, and I've been finding like a lot of wonderful people over on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Geek Fine Art and... A whole lot. Barb Oblivion. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, that reminds me. A whole lot of people over there. Uh, uh, Tegan Collects. Um, and uh, they're they're all sharing a, a lot of wonderful content. And Downright Nerdy has certainly been uh, inspiring Ryan and I on, to some extent, to kind of need to step up our video game. So we got to, like, build ourselves an actual functional filming area and all yeah. that so we can make our videos look extra good. Extra spicy. We're oh, coming yeah. for them. We're challenging them. Yes. No, I was listening to their thank you episode while I was at work, and I was like, man, it, it got me right here, you know? Yeah. It was like, man. He it, pointed at his heart. Yeah, I, I did. But it, it felt good. And like Ryan said, we're nothing. <laughs> yeah, like nice. when he says, like, yeah, these guys are a huge inspiration to us, I'm like, why? I, we're, <laughs> it's like, we're what? It's very touching. Yeah, yeah we're what? It, it is very touching, yes. Um, love you guys. Love what they do over there. Go support them. They're wonderful. They're becoming part of an ever-growing community mm-hmm. that we're very One could happy even say to be part of. A family. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, I was going to say network. No, I was listening to. Uh, no, I was listening to one of his episodes, and he said he'll only allow one other person, to, one person to wear a Dodgers hat in his house. I kind of want to push that. Just Is show it up. Vin to, Diesel. I know um, oh. it's a, another friend of his, oh, okay. but I want to show up to if I, we ever go to his mom's basement studios to record there up in the Bay Area. I'm, I just want to show up, just all decked down Dodger I'm not, gear. To I'm see not going to lie to you. I was going to tell them to bring their Giants hats for our Star Wars video oh. thing into Ben's home. Oh. I'm going to do the same. That's awesome. <laughs> if they would have well, done it, I would. Wore my Dodgers hat. Ben, we have already triggered them enough. 
with our love of The Last Jedi. Oh. I don't want to alienate them anymore. All right. Speaking of aliens. I was just listening to an episode, actually, <laughs> of theirs. Because uh, I was so far behind in my podcast, I just finally started listening to their podcast. Um, and they they were talking about, the they brought up The Last Jedi, and they was, I was like... Well, that's an opinion you can have. Hell yeah. I'm again like like having Mike on like we have such different opinions but we can have nice civil conversations about it. Yeah. And that's always so much fun to I get someone talking, else's perspective. I was talking to Michael Carls- Carlson about about another podcast which I won't name um who is very uh hateful, angry, uh really just it's not the one you're thinking of. Okay. Um and it, it's they they deliberately go out of the way to say negative things. Like that's their they want negative things. And you know, they made a claim that uh, Zack Snyder's daughter killed herself because of Marvel bullies. Oh boy! Oh. No, thank and you. I never, for, I've never forgiven them about that. Yeah, I, I immediately turned that podcast off. So I'm subscribed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, and I was, that's how it happened to me. And and I was talking to, to Michael Cross about it, and I was like, you know, it's just disagreement is one thing, but having a civil conversation, being trying to be positive where you can, that's I think there needs to be more of that in the world. And I would much rather talk to someone who disagreed with me but wanted to talk to me about it than someone who just wanted to yell at me about why yes. they hated something. Yeah, because like a lot of people, like your opinion's not going to change. But if you have a different perspective, you can see why other people feel that way. Yeah, you don't have to be mad that someone doesn't like something or like something. Exactly, you don't. It's just an opinion. You and guys. we can all agree that the Praetorian Guard fight is one of the best fight scenes ever. And we can and all agree cannot... that the Last Jedi is the best Star Wars film is, and ever. So mm, you know, now we're <laughs> no, now we're, <laughs> we're creating divides in the now, Star Wars. Now we're stretching it, but hey, <laughs> Pod v Pod, God. <laughs> but hey, seriously, huge, huge thank you and shout out to Downright Nerdy. We love you guys too. Yeah, Yay. Really, really, thank you. Yeah. All right. So some trailers. Mm. Go Dodgers. Uh, the Purge season two released a trailer. Yes. Yeah, it did. Uh, I've not seen season one, mind you. Um, I know. I'm I, just kidding. I really like the Purge movies, so I really should see that that um, that show. But the the what what really intrigued me about this is that it's going to deal with what happens in between the purges. Yes. And I'm super into that idea. It's me too. Like there are people who are, are like maybe not ready for the purge to be over. What does the government deal with with people like that? The or cleanup. The cleanup. I, we've never seen the cleanup afterwards. Yeah, we've never. I love the tagline like I, what happens on purge night doesn't stay on purge night. Yes. I'm like I, man, yes. I, I yes. don't know. I want to say it was Ryan or it could have been Brandon or someone on the show where it's like man. Can you imagine, like the day, the next day at the office after the purge? A lot of people have been like, saying that. I know, <laughs> but still, it's like you meet someone who whom you thought was your best year at work. You see him on purge, and I think, oh, this person's gonna help me out. And they try to murder you. Yeah. They fail, and next day at the purge, you're sitting next to the same person, or the sitting in the same cubicle, or the next, or the hey Fred, and <laughs> and like, that's what we hey talk- Fred, and you're like, no, that's you tried to about- murder me, you rat bastard. That's what we talked about the thesis of the of the first purge. It's going back to that the idea that the first purge was saying you're not. You're not ending crime. You're breeding a generation of psychopaths. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so, like, that's what I. That's what I kind of. That's what I'm hoping this season digs into. Yeah. Like, that's what really got me excited. And again, like, when you don't, when you're not restricted to an hour and a half movie, and you have like ten hours to tell your story, there's so much awesome world building. I love it. I did too. And now that we're gonna be like, this is the first time we're gonna be out of the actual purge situation. So like, it's it's an entirely new world. Is this uh, is this fake nerds watch purge? If you want to purge, if you want to have a purge night every night of the week, Ooh. baby, we can do it. Ooh. Yo, we so can, I I'll s- wear a mask. I, I don't know if I could seen... be on it, but I really want to be now. I mm. get on season one, baby. I haven't yeah. seen yeah. any of the purge. Not of the movie. I've only seen like we'll the... have a purge a thon. We'll feel really great afterwards. Uh, We're gonna purge man, your whole body. I cannot watch all four of those movies. That would row. like, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to have some like and the show and the God. show. No, thank you. You'd put on like not Teletubbies a... afterwards. Not in a row. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put on like something like Looney Tunes. No, I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna have to like watch Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty or Sub Disney Princess make me feel good movie at the end. Beautiful. All right, moving I'm on. very excited. Me Just too. around the riverbed. Me too. Uh, I'm glad that the show is already coming back for another season with it's a super fast. with a mentality of do something different already. Yes, yes, same. Don't just do a different year with different characters on Purge Night. Explore this even further. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next thing we'll, we'll talk about is Zombie Land Double Tap. This is the sequel to Zombie Land. Ten years later. Long time coming. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I I wasn't completely loving this trailer. Oh my god, I'm I'm right there with you. Okay, I, I find this a little late. I it's a hundred percent late. <laughs> yeah, I felt it was really this, late. This I think I feel like we needed this film like two years after the first one. <laughs> may, I'd argue even four. You could get away yeah. with four. Now we're we're so far away. I'm like I kind of don't care. You yeah. know what kind? Of, it, at first I'm like okay yeah Zombie Land two. As the trailer went on I'm like mm, neat okay. 
what really didn't get me is I hate the trope of you meet your doppelgangers. I, I've only ever seen that one other time, though. I don't, is this something I, that's been prevalent in a I, lot of your media? I think it is because I, I don't. I know it's a thing I've seen before. Where it's, it's far more common on television. Interesting. Yeah, where it's like you meet the same per, per, person who's like you but isn't you, but they act just like you. Like when uh, um, the guy from Silicon Valley, and he was also in Godzilla. I forget. I forget his name. Thomas Middleton. Thank yeah. you. Thomas Middleton comes out, and he's essentially. And Emma Stone's like, "Holy shit! This is the same." This guy's this guy's Tallahassee. This guy's Columbus. That that actually works for me more than just Luke Wilson as the other Tallahassee because yeah. it's just one dude. But like, if you're going to go for absurdity and have a whole comparison, this is where things like that work. Like, it worked for me in Shaun of the Dead. Okay. Yes. Yes. It right. That's, like, that's a, that's where a there's moment. the entire parallel group. That's a moment. And that's that's really funny. Um, so it can be played well. That's not like the thing that's breaking me of the movie. I think what part of what's breaking me of the movie is I'm so over Jesse Eisenberg. I don't even care. Um, and I don't really care to see him play that character again. I liked him in that movie, but like 10 years down the road of that character, I don't need. For me, the trailer was, um, hey, guys, you remember Zombie Line 1? You remember, uh, uh, you better nut up or shut up. And remember the rules. And like, you have to remind you of everything from there. The, I, I laughed a couple times near the end of the trailer. I actually laughed. I didn't laugh when Luke Wilson came on. I did laugh when Thomas Middlevich came on. Okay. Um, uh, I thought, it just feels late. It feels like I, an unnecessary sequel to me. But like again, it, like I really like the cast and I really like that first one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping. I, I, I'm I, hoping. I wasn't also a big fan of the hot pink blonde girl. I wasn't a big fan. Well, of her. I think there's yeah. something more to her. I'm pretty sure there they, is. It but just who it knows. didn't. Nothing showed me anything that New. that excited me. Yeah, you know, other than like I like those actors. I liked that first movie, but there was nothing in this trailer that made me go, oh, yeah, cool." Like nothing made me laugh. Nothing's like super new. Nothing. Nothing me. excited me about it. Although I did, um, I did like uh, Tallahassee just saying like, "I would have been a great. You're welcome, America." Yeah, I, pr- I probably just, uh, honestly, I'm looking forward to Woody Harrelson interacting with um, Rosario Dawson. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm actually completely opposite of you guys. I was yeah. actually really into this trailer. Right on. Um, okay, I was cool. Super, so that's not a problem. Cool. I, I was, I really like that first movie. I'm not as um, harsh on Jesse Eisenberg, only as Lex Luthor as it was the only thing I don't like him. Yeah, it. no, I lukewarmed on him in most things. No, that's um, Luke Wilson. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, uh, I have to quit. Sorry. <laughs> ah, motherland. Sorry. I have liked him in in every film I've seen him in, except for, I like him too, except, except for, for Justice League, Justice League yeah. and, and Batman v Superman. Like I really do like Jesse Eisenberg as an actor. Yeah. Um, and I, honestly, I like I would have liked him as, as Lex Luthor. I just don't like the des- the decision they made to do that. Lex that Luthor. choice, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's not Lex Luthor. Yeah, it's not. Um, so I've uh, seen the cast back. I really like that cast. Um, and I really like how they're just like, yeah, these all Oscar nominated Oscar winning actors now in this zombie comedy, zombie comedy movie. Um, honestly, it worked for me. I, I was, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of stoked. I'm happy to revisit this world. Uh, I hope they can catch lightning in a bottle. There's no guarantee you can after this so long. Uh, I honestly, do you know what this trailer made me feel? It gave me the men in black international trailer vibes where I was like, Oh, it's coming back to a franchise. Like uh, the trailer didn't do it for me, but maybe it'll be good. Uh, I didn't see anything that was like they, this new movie needed to be made. That's just like again bringing something new to the table. Except like, oh, Luke Wilson is in this movie now. Cool, I guess. What yeah, a what a star! Not, not, not just nothing that really got me amped about it. I I, I want I do, to be because I, I like with you guys though that it is late. It, yeah. it is very late. I I liked the original. I, there was just nothing here that got me amped, yeah. and I'm like, mm, I I hope I feel differently when the movie comes out. And I know right now right now I'm just like. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Has me amped to watch the first one again. I, actually, yeah, because I do like that first one. Yeah, yeah, I think that first one's a really great movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I just hope. Uh, I, again, like I said, I like the trailer. I just hope that the the creative team, because they're all back. Um, I hope that were they, they were they involved on in the pilot too, though. The director was for sure. Okay. I don't know about the okay. writer because it feels like they tried to do more Zombieland stuff with the pilot and that didn't work. So like, oh, I guess we have to make a sequel. Well, they've always intended to make more yeah. Zombieland. Okay. The TV series was just the way of doing that, but they couldn't get the cast. Um, they would. I think they would have gone forward with the TV mm-hmm. series if they had. If they had wanted. The ca- they got the cast back. Okay. I'd always known that this guy wanted to do more Zombieland. So this is. He this made is, Venom first. So this is kind of him doing that. And again, just <sighs> hope that they can. I forgot. Yeah. I just hope that this time, you know, it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle twice. But I, ho- I hope they can pull it off. I do too. I do too. Um. All right. Scary stories to tell in the dark. Uh, this is a new trailer. Uh, focuses more on the jangly man. man jangly, there's so jangly. Many, there's so many good scary creature looking things in here yeah, i'm so dude. excited yeah, this those, good. those stories are scary i hope this movie's good yeah yeah i was surprised to see it was pg-13 oh it is yeah 
I mean, you can still have like her stuff. Those, yeah. those books are not designed. They're they're designed to be like the highest level of scary stories that children could still yeah. encounter, right. like middle schoolers and stuff. It's it's designed for, it's really designed for that audience, middle schoolers. Yeah. It's designed for them to kind of pick it up and, and really freak Again, themselves out. Again, this does look out. like, like we were saying it's like a rated R Goosebumps, but it still looks like a mature, more, more mature Goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, like a PG-13 of... Goosebumps. Yeah. Because Goosebumps is PG. Mm-hmm. Uh, scary Stories to Tell in the Dark had one of those stories, which was the one about the, the girl who had the uh, little bow tie necklace around Is that her where neck? she takes it off? Where she takes bed? it off and her oh, head falls off. Yeah. Nice. That's okay. where that came from? Yeah, it's, it's oh, from. I don't, I don't remember where I heard that, but I've heard that story before. I, I want to say it's mess. been repurposed for other things, too. Yes. Though. I've definitely seen that that before in other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that... Nope, nope. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this. this I am, fun. too. Should be a lot of, should be pretty, hopefully pretty good. I feel like I just saw a new trailer for this recently. Sure. Uh, They're starting to roll out a couple TV spots. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I don't want to see any more. It's like, I just want to see this movie really bad. Yeah. It's yeah, like, I'm excited. Yay, yay, more horror movies you guys are going to drag me to. Yeah. Baby, you're not, Ben's like, no. oh, we're not dragging you. You are dragged. happily walking in. <laughs> ben, ben <laughs> you are <laughs> popcorn in hand. Ben walking in. Guess I did all I can do. <laughs> yeah. I really it's fought like, this one. I don't, I, don't like know that, that, uh, <laughs> I don't know that anything will bewilder you more this year than Midsommar. No, I don't yeah, think you, so. I'm proud of you because, like, yeah, good luck finding a weirder horror movie than that. Because, like, it's, you you hit us, you hit something. No, and you guys should see it. Well, you guys did, Brandon. Yeah, I should see my your face well, when well, I well. at the end of Midsummer. I was looking over at Ryan and, just, and Sparks. It wasn't was even like, the end. It what was the middle. The <laughs> no, it was the it was the sex orgy or not the orgy. The the no sex spoilers. Sex orgies. Oopsies. <laughs> I, but he totally sparks from someone who knows nothing <laughs> about the movie. Anything is a spoiler. Yeah. At this point. Uh, sparks like halfway through the movie uh, turns to me and goes, "This is the craziest thing Ben has ever seen." <laughs> and I look at Ben and he's just like, <laughs> his mouth, mouth, mouth agape. agape and staring. Although, <laughs> I will. I will say, I know less about Hereditary than I do about Midsommar. And good. Uh, yeah, you should try and keep it that way as long as you possibly can until you yeah. see it. I'm actually, I'm actually really bummed that I, I somehow Midsommar has been spoiled for me more than Hereditary has. You could, s- and Hereditary has been out can longer. I, can I tell you something? You could pretty much know the plot of Midsommar, and it wouldn't really. Ruin Midsommar is super traditional it's, in like in its storytelling. It's, actually, it's not that it, there's anything surprising in the film. It's it's the way that they go about showing it to you. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yes. Invader Zim, enter the Florpus. Not much in the way of footage here. It's just kind of a clip. But the <laughs> biggest thing here is that we have a release date, August 16th. Next one? Neat. Neat. So that's really cool. That we're yeah. getting more Invader Zim. That's really cool. Glory it's to Zim. It's been a long time. I didn't realize that show is like almost 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Remember, I just looked on the Wikipedia. Remember Butt Ugly Martians? Mm-hmm. Yes, I yeah. do. Man, I, I bet they look even butt uglier now. <laughs> they probably... Dude, I, had to, I would sing that damn theme song over and over what again. What is it? Ha- but... Ugly Monsters. Because oh, I remember they, they canceled but, uh, they, ca- they canceled Invader Zim for Butt Ugly Monsters. Oh, really? Yeah, because Invader Zim was too raunchy and they wanted something a little a little less. Which is funny because my mom was totally fine with me watching Invader Zim and then when I say, hey, I want to watch this new show called Butt Ugly Martians. It's got butt in it. And my mom was like, ha- well, like what? S- what that? I Oh, yeah, they Louise. do not look good anymore. Oh, <laughs> yeah? The Butt Ugly Martians. I bet. I'm gonna. I'll look it up. But yeah, she was very mad that the word "butt" was in the title, and she. Yeah. But then she watched the episode of the show with me. She said, "Okay, this show isn't as bad. She just does not." Hey like man, the title. I watched Hey Arnold, and Helga said the word "crap," and I convinced my mom. I was like, "Mom, Helga says crap in this TV show about children, so I should say crap." And she's like, "You're out of your mind. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot swear because a show swears." I'm like, "But you let me watch it." Really? And, what is that? And then the uh, the last trailer is um, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, which is the Mister Rogers biopic. What? It, it's like eating like a. Get some cotton candy and just like sitting in like a warm bed. It's just, like, I feel like uh, coming a year after the um, uh, the uh, Mr. Rogers, the Mr. Rogers documentary. What was that called? Uh, uh, Hello, neighbor. Hello, 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 Hello. Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so both titles from that song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Tom Hanks looks real good. Yeah. I mean, this is like it's Tom Hanks being doing what he does best. Yeah. Warm and what? Can't, what historical figure can't Tom Hanks play? Because I feel like Oprah he's... Winfrey. Yeah, actually, actually, no. I he could probably do it. I wouldn't want to see it. I, I wouldn't want to see it either. <laughs> no, but he's played Captain Sully. He's played the captain Walt from Walt Disney. Yeah, he's played Walt Disney. That was his other Captain big Phillips. One. Captain Phillips. Uh, he's played a lot of these these historical like uh, Mr. Rogers and Walt Disney being. I feel like being the two most prominent in entertainment. And it's like, dang, he he looks good as yeah. Mr. Rogers. I was like, yeah. all right. Yeah, it seems very. It seems very well natured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he. There's even a line in it. Please don't ruin my childhood. And I think that's kind of that was intentional. Like 
we are going to show you pure Mr. Rogers. We're going to show you his life. Yeah. Uh, and, I don't want to know how, if Mr. Rogers was a bad person. Right. I don't need and to know he, this. <laughs> and how he touched people. Oh, Lord. Did you guys hear that stupid rumor that was floating around? I want to say... A decade high school, ago? Yeah, where the reason why he, Mr. Rogers wore a bunch of long sleeve shirts because he had all these marine tattoos because he was a sniper in Vietnam or something like that. Well, that's that not would, the rumor I heard. That would be dope if that was true. It's not true. <laughs> that's like that's like best outcome for somebody yeah. who was... Who Did you hear the that. rumor? What he kind became, of rumor? He became the inspirational Mr. Rogers. That's like the best... That's like yeah. the best outcome story for somebody who did like, that. War he was vet. a sniper in Vietnam, and then he was like, "No, I want to teach. I want. I'm going to go to the broken kids and try and tell them about the problems. Leave the world a better place than yeah. than he than left it." it. Is. Uh, after I watched this trailer, uh, in the recommended videos, it was the 1997 Lifetime Achievement Award that he won at the Emmys uh, uh, years before he uh, before he passed. Uh, and I watched that video, and it's. I never really watched Mr. Rogers a lot, but like uh, he's super old. And he's like, I just uh, thank you guys so much. I want, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna look at my watch and I want you guys to be silent for 10 seconds and think about someone who really means a lot to you. And then he just waited for 10 seconds. He's like, it wasn't that wonderful that you mean so much to someone and that they mean so much to you. And it's like this super beautiful message, like just years later and, just, and everyone in the audience is crying and I'm just like, oh my God, he's still, he's so magical. He's so good. He's so sweet when all did, the time. I can't believe it. When did he pass? I don't remember. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Google, I damn it! So the, I'm you on guys it. Keep I'm on it. So yeah. the whole Mr. Rogers thing really passed me over. I didn't really. Same here. I didn't really know. Who I it was kind of knew of him. It's definitely this, a little bit before our generation. Through the zeitgeist, but not really anything. It was him and Bob Ross that. Oh, Bob Ross! I heard about like two years ago. That's the first time I ever heard. Yeah. About Bob oh wow. Ross. I, I let's figure. I, um, there's like this. There's a meme on the internet called the whole the Trinity of wholesomeness. Yes. You have Mr. Rogers being kind to others. Um, Steve Irwin being kind to animals yeah. and Bob Ross being kind to yourself. The Holy Trinity. Did you guys see yeah. the Steve Irwin pops they're putting out? Yes, I did. 2003, February 27th. Yeah, okay. Oh. So one of the things yeah. that really strikes me about about um, this Teens. and, and um, uh, Mr. Rogers just in general is that he, you know, he was a Christian, but he was so... He he was so almost liberal in his in his views. Like he wanted, like I, I don't know what his political standing was, but you know he was like love everyone as if they're your neighbor and that sort of yeah. thing. And that was kind of like the, his whole thing. And I, I found that really empowering, really really engaging. And uh, it's sad that we don't have a figure like that on screen today. Yeah, uh, like I mean, like children's educational stuff like is not nearly as prevalent as it used to be. Because mm -hmm. one, just kids don't really watch regular TV anymore. <laughs> sure. Like PBS is around, but like. It's not PBS like a staple. Even have, uh, Sesame Street anymore. It's yeah. HBO. Yeah, that. Well, I found out. That's so crazy. <laughs> wow. It's weird. But HBO Max. You're home for the well, Sesame Street. Well, at least at least Sesame Street has a home. I'd rather have there be Sesame Street that's why, somewhere. That's why you get a video of uh, Elmo talking with Cersei and G and Tyrion. Oh, that's about, so uh, right. Oh, they yeah. uh, should settle their differences. That's in so the room. fun. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's cute. All right. So that's all the trailers we got. Anything else? Oh, wait. Did I miss? I did. Jojo Rabbit. Oh yeah! Oh Lord, <laughs> Lord in heaven! <laughs> I totally forgot about Jojo. What a what a what an interesting movie. Yeah, really r r strange for a theatrical trailer to be this short. It's like a minute, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is Taika Waititi's new film, uh, where he plays the imaginary Adolf Hitler. <laughs> the, yeah, the imaginary friend of this child, but he's Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you know that Hitler meme where um they just change the subtitles to whatever he's talking about? Is it's that from a 2004 movie called Downfall? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. It's like they, a really good movie. Yeah, they and changed yet, that meme. That Ryan retweeted. Yes, we've all seen it. The world <laughs> has seen it, Ben. Okay. Yeah. Well, because I both take away. Well, I didn't know. No. Yeah, because I didn't know that it pertained to Jojo the Rabbit. I thought it was just a random dude talking about Jojo Rabbit or Jojo Rabbit. I didn't know what it was about, and then I see the trailer. I was like, "Oh shit, this is real." Yeah, it's real. This yeah. is what. Yeah. So I really want to see this now. Ta Taika looks really funny as always. Um, and uh, this just looks so kooky and unique. It kind of gives me a little bit of um, Death of Stalin vibes. Okay, yeah, I didn't uh, see it, but like I guess you mean. Yeah. yeah, Death of Stalin was a was a really fun sat satire, and this is obviously supposed to be satirical. Um, Taika Waititi was asked, "Did you mimic Adolf Hitler anyway?" He's like, "No, he was a c word," <laughs> and I really appreciated that. Um, uh, the I saw an interview uh, where this lady asked, like, so uh, you have a new movie coming out, Jojo Rabbit, where you play Hitler. Uh, can you tell me about a Polynesian Jewish person playing Hitler? And he was like, well, I think no one would be better to play Adolf Hitler than me, mother effers. <laughs> and he's like, F that guy. And he gives a big middle finger. And I'm like, that's a good answer, dude. Yeah. That's a great answer. Uh, Taika's amazing. I'm yeah. really excited to see this. Yeah, again, like, I am too. the dude goes from making, like, uh, super small movies to making the biggest Marvel blockbusters going right back to Jojo Rabbit. Like, it's so cool that he is that that range. Well, really, it, it was 
you know, Thor Ragnarok was so strange for him to do because it's so against what he's done. Like, but it you, still feels like a Taika Waititi yeah, movie. Yeah, he went from from where the where where the wild things are is not the what movie. we do in the what shadows. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> yeah. um, no. The, the one with the kid and Sam Neill. Oh, well, the hunt for the wilder hunt people. Hunt for the wilder people. Yeah, um, he went from the wild things. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Uh, hunt for hunt for the wilder people to Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. And but again, that's a very small movie. Small, but he did small movie, small movie, small movie, small movie, big movie, small movie. Yeah, I and like then it. He has, yeah. a sm- he has a big movie, Akira, Waiting in the Wings, and Thor. Not anymore. It's on hold, baby. Well, he has I that really and, Love and, Thun- and Love and Thunder. So really... he has two big movies, Waiting in the Wings. Mm-hmm. And Flash Gordon. I really want to see oh, Hunt for the Wilder People. That's right. He's doing it's Flash. Really All of Taika's movies. Taika's right. doing Flash Gordon, too. Did they animate a one? Yeah. yeah. Film, yeah. We talked about it. Three big movies waiting in the wings. Yeah. Uh, um, real quick though, Akira's put on hold because he's doing Thor first. Well, so Akira's not happening for years. But it's still going to happen though. We'll, it, we'll, it is uh, unlikely it will happen with him. We'll see. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Anything else we want to touch on before we move in? Before we get Mike back in here and talk about Mike's impossible trivia challenge? Heck no. I'm ready to talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark. All right. Let's do I this. definitely know who didn't win this competition. What? 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 He spends his time locked away. Never before has he seen the light of day. He handwrites movie scripts in a demented fit and makes you look like a lazy piece of crap. He is no longer a man. He has become a savage. You think you're a true fan? (laughs) This is Mike's Impossible Movie Trivia Challenge. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Explosions. I hope you guys are ready. Is that your voice? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so this is Mike's Impossible Trivia Challenge. If you are just uh, now tuning in, if this is your first time, uh, welcome. Welcome. This welcome. is a fun little segment we've, start, we've started with Mike. Uh, because, Mike, you do these posters. Yes. Uh, where, you, where you write out. I hand write out full movie scripts and albums to create portraits from the movies. Yeah. So um, we is this the third? This will be the third. Wow, this is the third, yeah. crazy! Yeah. Fourth time that Mike has been on, but the third trivia challenge. Yeah, yep. I have I have the Indiana Jones print because we're doing Raiders of the Lost Ark, and this is uh, Sparks's first time doing the trivia challenge. Finally here, here. Yes. here. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. That's in- that's incredible. Yes, yes. I've done it at home. <laughs> by myself just counting, just counting. And he would have won every time I w- no I would have won Jurassic Park though yeah yeah. yeah. He, he texted me he was like I would have I would have beat you was like, that, was yeah, a, probably. that was a tricky one that was a tricky yeah. one so remember everyone playing at home tweet us uh, your scores at the end yes fake nerd po- hashtag fake nerd podcast at fake nerd podcast mm-hmm. at Mike Matola. yeah and I'll make sure and I'll pick uh, a person at random and you win the print are we Ooh, hell yeah. are we like writing these down yeah, yeah so the way it is it's multiple choice because otherwise it would be truly impossible uh, and I didn't want to sit here and have it, all four of you go, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I got no All right, man. so you just lock in your answer, and then we'll go through, and I'll play the clip. And so, so all these are in the movie. Uh-huh. This is not trivia. This is not behind the scenes. These are because this is an audio format. Sure. Characters have said this. Man. Okay. This is important. All right. Now, how have you seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yes. How many times do you think you've seen it? Couple, couple times, honestly. Okay. What about you? I've seen it a few times. I rewatched it last night. Okay, and? A handful of times, yeah. Okay, in I uh, probably probably somewhere close to twenty five times in my life. So I'm you sure. sh- you should know all these, but it's been a while. And like I was telling Ryan, I was like, a lot of those viewings I will chalk up to like it's on, but yeah. I'm not like watching. Right. Like, I've seen okay, Raiders a lot, yeah. so like so paying so attention thing, to. So you hear that? Thing, a lot of backpedaling. So watching, yeah. <laughs> watching Raiders this time because I watched I watched it this morning. Um, <laughs> watching it this time, <clears throat> I realized why I don't revisit it that much. So Last Crusade is actually my favorite Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. I realized why I don't revisit it enough. Uh, that snake pit terrifies me. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. And funny. I have, I have always blocked it out for some reason. Okay, and whenever got to so like, Brandon, nope. Funny thing is, when Ryan and I watched it together at my house yesterday, and when we got to the the Well of Souls, the snake pit, I look over to Ryan. I was like, "Do you think Brandon just like accepts this part, or does he skip it?" Zara was laughing at me. Every time something, I there was a the cobra it was shows completely up. Completely separate. It wasn't because of the no. snake. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cobra Unrelated. shows up, and I accidentally brushed my dog, and I jumped out of my bed. I was so scared. <laughs> so so when you go to the Indiana Jones ride Disneyland, do you just sit farthest away from the snake? Yes, but it it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Not like that. laughs> yes. It, ma- it makes me uncomfortable, but it doesn't scare me. Okay. So uh, a Why lot of times, for whatever snakes? reason, for Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark and a couple and a handful of other films, uh, if I see it enough times, the snake just kind of makes me uncomfortable and less scared. Okay, but for whatever t- whatever reason, there's sometimes where it's just like I just can't get over the fear of that of that moment. Okay, interesting. Sure. Interesting. Um, Send your rubber snakes too. Yeah. Oh, no, boy. thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so if you are playing along at home, tweet at us your score. Yeah. Uh, at Mike Patola at Finger yep. Podcast. Uh, why don't we add the hashtag Mike's 
uh, Mike's trivia challenge. Yeah. Mike's impossible movie trivia challenge. There's it's like 240 a characters long now. Yeah. Do the whole thing. We can we can add more. We have the technology they're, they're now. T- they're they're tweeting their score, so it's gonna be like three, <laughs> and then hashtag. <laughs> it's like, right. hey, okay. or someone's gonna be like, hey, I got this. Qu- okay. Totally got this question right. But blah 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 blah. You guys ready? I will be keeping score as well as oh my goodness, uh, as well as answering. Okay, here we go. All right, number one. What language shit. do the natives speak? Shit. Oh, 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 oh shit! I, I, oh, wait, wait, wait. it's multiple choice. Multiple choice. Multiple ben, choice. you do this all the time. Yeah. You, yeah, jump, yeah. you jump. You too jump too quickly. You jump the gun. Okay. Is it Brimhala? Is it Cahote? Or is it Hovitos? <sighs> oh. So, yeah, so while you, you, you guys think, I'm can gonna, you repeat the answers? Is it Brimhala? Is it Cahote? Is it Hovitos. Bless you. Thank you. Oh, yes. All right, you guys. All right. You, lock it. you guys locked it in, right? Yeah. Everyone's locked in? Yeah. All right. You, we'll just go left to right. Shout, shout, shout out. What was the last one you said? Hovitos? Hovitos. 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 That's what do you what think? Cajote. Cajote. Hovitos. <gasps> Let's find out. Let's see what he will play the clip now. Too bad the Hovitos. No! <laughs> Don't know either way I do, Belloc. Yes, too bad. You could warn them if only you spoke Hovitos. Oh. No. It's Hovitos. No. Uh, Cajote is from uh, Star Trek Voyager. Oh, that, I knew that. <laughs> Don I, knew I was like, I was, I was coming up with the dummy answers, and I was like, Damn. hmm, I'm curious to see if anyone will, will did, grab this one. If I did, you and I look at each other. Before, yeah, 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 yeah. Like maybe, yeah. Did like, you and I look at each other and say that's probably going to be a question? We said that a lot. I'm very curious. Ma- I think we focus with. on the things we shouldn't though. Uh, <laughs> how many que- how many questions we, we got? just have seven. We just have seven, seven. questions. Nice and easy. Right. We have okay. three hundred and twenty four. So it is Let me pass uh-huh. out your scan drive. <laughs> part, part one of seven. So it is it is so far Sparks and I, one, Ryan and Ben. Two. Oh, how's it mm. feel, you guys? You guys watched it last night. I yeah. watched it this morning. Feels and bad. Sparks was trying to say, like, Oh, I've seen it, but not really. <laughs> it could have been I got hit in the head a couple times, could have been. <laughs> but he's he's got on amnesia. it. Yeah. All right. All right. Boy. Number th- all right, ready guys? Yeah. Number two. What is the name of Jacques Snake? Yeah. Got what it. is oh, the name oh. of Jacques Snake? Yep. All right. Is it Petey? Is it Reggie? Or is it Francis? I got it. Zara Locked was in. talking to me while while this happened. Oopsies. <laughs> Zara was laughing at me maniacally <laughs> during this part. Is it Petey? Is it Reggie? Or is it Francis? All right. Oh, I think I, I don't I think I'm wrong. Confident. Whatever. You guys all got it? All right, left to right. What we got? Reggie? That's my pet snake, Reggie. Reggie. <laughs> Reggie. Yeah. There's a big snake in the plane, <laughs> Jock! Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie! Oh, thank God. <laughs> Snake shot! I hate him. <laughs> I, okay, I I don't know if that's a reshoot or something, but there is no reason to establish that he doesn't like snakes. If they just got to the well of souls snakes. and it was full of snakes and ass. Very dangerous. I wouldn't go, but this wasn't established. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, d- I needed to know. And did it, this is out of nowhere. Well, like, he does it's lean it's the weirdest thing to have well, that he, in he there. He does lean over and goes, snakes. Well, well, that's what I mean. Exactly. So why is there this well, scene no, that, with a, Reggie? That's yeah. a good That's a good point. But I guess it does for the audience. It does give them a... a a, a, a better sense of dread when we see the Well of Souls. I, also, I, Reggie's uh, a funny name for a snake. Yeah, I think in true. some ways it makes Jacques. Indy an endearing character right off the bat because yeah. he has a flaw. Up to that point, he's been able to handle everything. Oh, all you, but you thought he handled that situation well? I mean, he's the only he one who got away. He lost the yeah. He, that was a failure. Alfred, no, Alfred, Alfred, he always fails I mean, in the first. I mean, uh, in a sense yeah. of I, I mean, in a sense of immediate like yeah. fear. Like, well, yeah. like when we when we get to before he loses the idol, he's been successful in everything. He's even he's bested both people who tried to dest- who who um who tried to kill him. Mm-hmm. Except Alfred Molina was Yikes. killed. Yeah, Alfred Molina got him, and he did the whole happened. Temple of Doom. Oh right, he yeah, did. he's and he went through the whole Temple of Doom. It's interesting. The uh, well, the anecdotes will come in between the next question. I suppose. <laughs> All right, okay. you guys ready? So, what do we got the scoreboard here? So it's it's uh. It's two two, two for Sparks and, and myself and one for Ooh, Ben. You and guys, Ryan. you guys gotta grab this. Okay, here we go. Grabbing it. Uh, where did Indiana Jones go to college? Oh, they say. Where did Indiana Jones go to college? Was it New York University? Was it Marshall University? Or was it University of Chicago? I got it. You guys locked in. I'm locked in. You locked in. Yeah. All right. Well, sure. Not confident on this one. No, though. no, no. Oh, no. very confident on this oh, one. Wait, what do you got? NYU. 
What do you got? University of Chicago. 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 It's uh-huh. my second guess. Yes, you're a man of many talents. Uh, you studied mm-hmm. under Professor Ravenwood at the University of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So I love that scene. Uh, well done, everyone, except for you, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ouch. Um, I love that scene because it's it, it, the FBI agents come in, and they're in a lecture hall, and Indiana Jones gets to do what he loves, which is actually teaching. It's kind of beautiful, and there's these little moments that happen. If you rewatch it, he has chalk in his pocket. It makes me <laughs> so happy. He flips the board around, and he reaches into his pocket, and he pulls out chalk. You're like, that's a teacher. Yeah, yeah. That is a yep. teacher move, <laughs> and he is so excited to teach these gets, two FBI I was guys about to say, about the- super He's excited so excited. Yeah. And then you see, there's this, it's one shot, and it's such a Steven Spielberg thing. Um, um. So Indiana Jones just came off a loss, right? Like he's still talking about it while they get in there. I was and they're I had talking my about hands. Lo- and they're talking about the lost ark, and it pans over to Indy, and you see him thinking, and then you see him realize he before anything he's like, oh, I'm going for this. You see him yeah. go, if I get this, that's the win. He's it's like this. The Raiders of the Lost Ark is the ultimate rebound movie. He's <laughs> like, I need this yes. to win. I, I uh, love that scene. I, I really like that scene. Also, I was uh, watching it. I was, you know, and you notice that everyone in that classroom is almost everyone in that classroom is a girl. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Like, and one them. guy gives him an apple. And, and everyone's <laughs> yeah. like super infatuated with with Indy. And mm-hmm. my girlfriend's like, he looks like such a dweeb. I was like, that is Harrison Ford in his prime. That's Excuse why I like him. Me. He's like it so like prime. mild manner. He's like, oh, I'm just being a teacher just when I'm not so like being. And I love him. I love him leaving the links. I love when he leaves the room with all his maps and everything. And I'm just like, this is this is such a good Harrison Ford moment. Just why would they want to talk to me? And he's when the girl blinks, he's like, what what? Oh, that's weird. You can see it in his face. All right. All right. Uh, Let's do this. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. In what city is the resting place of the Lost Ark? Got it. Oh. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. good. I like that. Okay. Is it Cairo? Is it Tanis? Is it Petra? Yeah, I got it. You guys all locked in? Oh, I got it. Locked in. Okay, God, this is not too impossible. I got, I'm, I'm losing my <laughs> <laughs> Locked in. We've got some information Wait, here. But oh, my saying? God. Oh, my God. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You guys are like, yeah, we all said that. <laughs> <laughs> we all got it right, right? Yeah. yeah. Left what? to right. What do you got? Uh, Tannis. 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 Oh, yeah. good. Oh, thank God. That one, I was like... They said it wrong. so many they times. They said it so many yeah. times. They always say Tannis. Well, we've got yeah. some information here, but we can't make anything out of it, and maybe you can. Tannis development proceeding. Acquire headpiece staff and make of it long so you can just really Abner hear how many times Ravenwood, you say it. U.S. Nazis have discovered Tannis. Just what does that mean to you, uh, Tannis? <laughs> Tannis, Tannis. Well, the city of Tannis is Tannis. one of the possible resting places of the lost ark. Tannis, 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 Tannis. <laughs> Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. What are they? <laughs> what are they um, there was a rumor going around in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and I was thinking about this uh, watching this, that Steven Spielberg would have a cameo as Abner Ravenwood. Oh. Mm. oh. I, 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 well, they didn't do that. No, they didn't. <laughs> I always thought that was weird because... In Crystal Skull? In Crystal that Skull. makes no sense. Yeah, but especially because Abner, cause Abner was supposed to be dead. And right. Like, why did that rumor show up <clears throat> if Abner died in this movie? And and weird, weird. weird make stuff up. Clickbait, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. But okay, it, okay. Was, it was before all that. Okay. Who before, knows, man? Oh, yeah. Who knows? Who um, what, where, where, where are leaderboards here? You guys are all on the board. Uh, yeah, we actually are doing very well. Uh, all right, so it is three for Ben, four for Sparks, three for me and Ryan. So Sparks is just... Sparks have you gotten everyone lead. right so far? Yes. Oh, no. Sparks is in the lead. Uh, oh, no. We gotta, you guys got to destroy Sparks. I gotta, so the last Sparks, take your headphones off. The last, you guys, yeah. the next question. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first... If I get every single question right except that first one, I'm like, I'm going to hate myself. It's probably... <laughs> just get ready for it. The first one, they're called the Jovitos, <laughs> which I think is so funny <laughs> that you guys are like, oh, it could be anything. <laughs> um, where are we? Okay, okay. How much money does Indy owe Marion? Yep. Oh. Okay, you guys, uh, yeah. Do I even need to? No, oh, no, Sparks you, looks you worried. Should, you should know. anyway, but you should, I, okay. you should okay, okay. for the audience. Is it $2,000? Is it $5,000? Or is it $7,000? Right. Oh no! I think I got it. I think I got it. 
I love Ooh, Ben's Oh, you guys are so sparks. How you doing over there? Oh, okay. Every single yeah, time you're sweating we do. a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> I'm just trying to think of like uh, Alexa. Turn on the fan. At what point? <laughs> at what point is it? Occur- anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, it, it, every time. Every time. Uh, oh, sorry. I actually did it. Oh, sorry. Oh, I actually <laughs> turned on the. Everyone at home, their their the lights just. <laughs> Alexa's gone. Alexa, crazy. shut up. No, <laughs> don't tell my Alexa. Okay. Okay. I love how I love how excited Ben goes whenever you answer. He's like, I know this. He's been doing this since the first trivia challenge. Oh, the first trivia challenge. Get excited for what trivia that I one? know. Jurassic Park. Oh, and yeah. he started blurting out the answers. Oh, yeah. That's why <laughs> he's like, don't DNA. And we're like, okay. Oh, okay. It's okay. That's all right. There's all right. a, and I wanted to say, there's a running joke on, there was a running joke on um, How Did This Get Made, where Jason Manzoukas would always like yell at Alexa uh, for people listening <laughs> oh, for, for to their start their Alexas. Oh, Lord. Anyway. Okay. Uh, where are we? Oh, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, did right. the answers? Yeah. The, what, what's your answer? Yeah. So $5,000. $5,000. $5,000. 5000 5, Were you curious when they say it? No, what I was trying to what I was trying to calculate out in my head is like, okay, he gave her three thousand and said he'd give her the other, but she it burned. Well, Joe, these Jabs forgotten how to show a lady a good time. Boy, you're something. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Until I get back my five thousand dollars, you're gonna get more than you bargained for. I'm you your goddamn partner. Da 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 da. da, da, da. I really like that character, Marion. Rare and Ravenwood. Yeah. yeah. Marion Ravenwood. Yeah. I really like Marion. I was one of the things I really like about Kingdom of Crystal Skull. One of the few uh, is that they brought her back. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I think that was a huge mistake. Like, no, I like that character. Really? A lot. Oh, I like the character yeah. in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> you don't like her in Kingdom? <laughs> no, it's just it's like it's they. they I mean, that whole movie is just the not, whole movie is a mess. I'll, I'll say, I'll say like as an idea to bring her back, it was something that I would be excited about in the film. I won't necessarily say I like the way it's done. I mean, touche. I'll agree with that. You're I'm wrong, and here's why. <laughs> my other, my <laughs> yeah. other show. No, yeah. Um, ice cold. What were we takes talking about? Ice the cold op- burns. What were we talking about? The op- the press with the press becoming the oppressor. Oh yeah. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. House of X. <laughs> um, okay. So now there's there's there might be some chance. There's two left. All right. Oh boy. And, two left. Uh, so yeah, two left. And there's gonna be a chance to pick up some stuff. These the one's gonna be. One's gonna be maybe real easy. Now that I know that you guys are just. Psychopaths. We <laughs> 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 just watched it, man. Um, well, good. Yeah, but we still got the first question wrong, yeah. right? I mean, maybe yeah. you guys are just not yeah. good at Jurassic Park. Maybe I just put this yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the last I was one, worried though. About this one. The last one, I'm going to be impressed. I was worried about this one. I was like, man, if this was the last crusade, I would have it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, you chose poorly. <laughs> yeah. How did that guy choose? Like poorly? <laughs> Not poorly. <laughs> average. You chose. Uh, yeah. He chose average. All Is this above. truly the cup of Christ? <laughs> um, <laughs> How'd you know she was a nun? Yeah, yeah. She talks in her sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many women have both of them slept with? <laughs> one, oh, two, or three? That's one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Um, we're, uh, five, five? Oh, okay. Six. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Next question. How many Kadam is the staff of Ra? Oh, Centimeters? no. Centimeters? Kadam? Oh, what? Wait. How many Kadam is the staff of Ra? I got it. All right, what's the... Okay, is it four Kadam? Oh, shit. Is it <laughs> five Kadam? Oh, no. <laughs> or is it six Kadam? No! <laughs> oh, good. The, oh, my God. I, I, see, other, a lot of, I, know I see a lot of blank faces. I know the Sparks regular is, part Sparks of this confident. question. Sparks is confident. Can you repeat the how many again? Four. Is it four Kadam? <laughs> Four, five, six. My God. Yeah, that's what, what are you like. <laughs> Four, five, six. I just want to make sure. Just go to Google. What's a Kadam? <laughs> What's a Kadam? Kadam Because I know the other 72? number. Yeah, okay. I know se- yeah, I know that one. Yeah, Shit. but you don't know. All right. Okay. Uh, screw it. I'm just going to Hail Mary. <sighs> okay, what Wait. do we got? Oh, you hold, on, hold on. Let me, hold on. Hold on. Four, oh five, six. Okay, I got it. <laughs> oh, oh, that was great to witness, whatever that was. I was, <laughs> I was hands and stuff. Okay, okay, you got, okay. So left to right, what do we got here? Right, I'm going to say five. Okay. I'm going to say six. Six. Five. What about the height of the staff? So did Bella get it off of here? Yes, it is here. This was the old way. This means six kadam height. About 72 inches. 70. Uh, <gasps> take a... Yeah. <sighs> I and knew it. take back one kadam to honor the Hebrew god whose ark this is. 
Holy okay. shit. Well, I, think, I think we all know no, who no, will be no, digging in the wrong thick, place. Okay, because yeah. here's, my, here's my thought process. Here's shit. my little thing about it. He says six. He never says five. He says take one away. Yeah, yeah. That's but yeah. that's the that's whole reason. How that tall the is the staff place. of Ross? But that's yeah. the reason why this is yeah. the impossible trivia challenge. Uh, I like how you explained your incompetence as if it would change <laughs> no, anything. No, because he said, because I know he I love it, but no, I get it. the Nazis I just love it when people do that, where it's like, oh, you completely screwed this up. Yeah, I know. I did the wrong thing. Yeah, no, I already know that. I already know. Because he says we're all here. You're, uh, <laughs> damn it. So if you damn that, it all to hell. That, that line Kadam. was a guess, but as soon as Sparks said it, I was like, oh, he knows something. <laughs> I'm right. Because I know what they had to so take Sparks, away. Sparks, you're just, you're just, yeah. r- you're just blowing through these. So far, so far, Sparks has, has, yeah. has, is 100 So the next one's yeah, worth 100 this, no, points, no, right? Interesting. This uh, is why all the other yeah. ones were so much fun, because you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that with love, because oh, you were so good. You have a better memory good. than me, yeah. for sure. Next one I do of these. Man, man that's, really... that's, that is, again, impossible trivia challenge. Like, no, that is because such a, I know that is such a mess. That you don't thing. have to explain it. We, uh, we know, we know uh, that you didn't know it. Six and then flip it over, you take one. Man, that's so good. That's so good. I love it. Okay. That was a great question. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy your poster, The moment you were saying it, I was like, that's a good question. I was ready for 72, and then you said four, five, six, and I'm like, well, I got I it. I almost said, what's the unit of measurement of the staff of Ra? <laughs> uh, uh, Hixar, like, uh, Kadam? I just completely punish you guys. All right, here we go. Last question. Final one. Um, All right, wait, I almost final wanna, one. Here, final one. It, how about this? If you, if you can just tell me, if you can just tell me the answer. <laughs> oh. Okay? All right? If anyone, but All right. here's the r- rules for this, because this is fun. Yeah. If you can just, if you want to buzz in, right? Uh, if you get it wrong, you're out. That's fair. Okay. Oh, but you, so everyone has one, one, one win it all shot. Okay. <laughs> and then after that, I'll do the the the, the multiple choice. But okay. you're out if you get it wrong. Oh, okay. That's and that's fair. only if you buzz. In. I that's can choose not one. to buzz in. No, you can you, choose not to buzz in. You can if this, say I'm out, just yeah. saying if you guys want to go for. If you're it, confident. You know yeah. Okay. 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 Oh boy. Okay. Ben. Get ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm Ben's fixing to risk it all. Because <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm all, all in, baby. Oh, oh man. Explain to us how I get compe- didn't know. You guys know I get guessing. competitive. You okay. know I get competitive. What song does Sulla sing after Marion kisses him? Shit. 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 No, that's that's incorrect. You're out. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, I, I, wait. Can I know? Do I know? I know hold, the on, li- hold on. Hold on. Hold on. the lyrics. Hold on. I'll, I'll repeat the question. What song does Sulla sing after Marion kisses him? If you want to buzz in, you do it now. Okay, no, then I'm confidently saying no one's buzzing in. You guys I'm, want the multiple choice. I am not confident enough of the title of the song I don't, to say. I'm not confident okay. of the title. But right. I have no everyone, idea what the title everyone, is. Everyone play it cool when I read these out then. All right, okay. here we go. Okay. Ben. The, <laughs> right, all right, all right. Play it cool. The Major General's Song, A British Tar, or O oh, Foolish Fay. These are all Gilbert and Sullivan songs, just so you know. The, yeah. there, there is a, a sub theme to going, the, all those. I'm going to tell you how I know this when, 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 when oh, okay. we answer this. All right. Can okay. you repeat the, the options? Oh, my again? God. You don't know. Just say you don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I have a one three shot of getting it right. Leave me alone. Right. Right. Yeah, it's true. Uh, the Major General's Song, A British Tar, or Oh Foolish Fay. You guys are locked in? You didn't in? make up any of those, right? No, those are all Gilbert and <laughs> Sullivan okay, songs. Okay, good. Yeah. No, uh, Oh Foolish Fay is uh, in Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you got? Uh, a British Tar. Major General Song. I said British Tar. British Tar. Oh, goodness. Oh. Let's see what we got here. Thank you. A British Tar is a soaring yeah. soul. That's free as a mountain. You ran, Sparks ran the board. Now, could you have gotten all of these without multiple choice? I'll tell you what. I don't know 100%. I wouldn't. Uh, I would have gotten British Tar if I hadn't, at that point in time, been watching Raiders with subtitles. But British oh, Tar was in that uh, interesting. Same, like, that's very interesting. Once the song started, I was like, okay. Yeah. So, so here's how I knew it. Uh, in Star Trek Nemesis, they do, they do, they, they have, need they to get, they, they need to get data to land the ship, to land the shuttle, and, and they do a British Tar. That's yep. hilarious. And so I knew so from when the I, when, HMS Pinafore. When when Solace started singing, I was like, oh, that's the song for Star Trek Insurrection. So oh. I was kind of like, 
Oh shit! I had the other song Which Saul sings. The lyrics? Yeah, fantastic. In the beginning, you're like the ruler of the Queen's Navy, and I'm like, that's not the song he sings, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, w- well done, Sparks. You truly oh, are yeah. the fakest of nerds. All right. You are so uh, fake. I definitely would not have been able to remember the name Hovitos off the top of my head. Oh no! For that first one, you were asking like without multiple choice. Definitely wouldn't have been that one. So Sparks Ooh. is the winner. Hell yeah. So you get the, the you it. get the print, the signed print. This is so cool. Oh. Yeah, that's the entire script for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Man, and this, is a, this whole is incredible. Of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's get a picture. So of this. you guys saw. So the time lapse of this. It took me. It was. It was like four shoot days. It was okay. like full six eight hour shoot days to get this done. Damn, really? Yeah, it's incredible, man. And I couldn't move it. It was. It like really messed my back up. <laughs> Because yeah, usually, oh, yeah. usually you can move the canvas. So sure, kinda, sure. Yeah, yeah, this I had to but make you're sure. But you doing the camera I had, thing. I had like a bunch of lights. And I wanted to ask you about that, uh, about that um, uh, time lapse video. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the um, the artist who helped me with that, uh, Corey Garcia, she's amazing. And she, friend of a friend, she reached out to me. And she's like, we need to do something together. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. That's awesome. And we just workshopped a bunch of ideas and stuff. And um, yeah, in my op- that's my office um, that you see. Like, that's all, you know. And yeah. Uh, she set up the camera above and, and the way it works is so I learned a lot. She does a lot of stop motion animation. Right on. And so for this, um, it was a, it was a camera taking a picture every f- f- five seconds. Oh, and we actually ha- never turned it off. So when I was done for the day, it was running overnight because, oh, interesting. because, um, she didn't, we couldn't touch it to turn it off. Yeah. Like we couldn't touch and we couldn't touch the lights. We couldn't touch anything because it will, just you it messed the shot up. It, yeah, yeah, it sh- yeah, and it was really, really difficult. It was kind of funny because we had this like standoff of like, like I was like, you don't know how this is gonna, how long this is gonna take. Well, she's like, well, you don't know how long stop motion is gonna take. I'm like, no, seriously, this takes a really long time to do. <laughs> and she, she was just there. She just like burned through like four Netflix series sitting behind me. While I'm working, just to make sure. I loved everything. your little. I loved your little wow. wave. The that little took thing. four days. Apparently. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. Well, that that's that like that my the like, hamstrings were because for the stop the time lapse that was I had to do I had to stand with my hands like out holding the paper. Yeah. And I couldn't move, and she had to step in, pull that paper out, give me the bigger paper. I had to move. I could hear the so I could kind yeah. of, and I'd be like oh. Gosh, it was cr- it was it was a slog. It was like one of the most difficult shoots ever. Yeah, but uh, it came out really well. Yeah, it looked yeah, incredible. Yeah, really yeah. cool. You can follow the the artist uh, Corey Garcia online. She's amazing. <laughs> awesome. So and, and the, the piece itself is awesome. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. In, it's incredible. Your I, work always amazes me. I'll be honest. Like as we were as I was watching the film, I'm like. I wonder how many times Marion says Indy in this movie. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> so many times! Yeah. Like y- you have to find in there where it's just Indy. <laughs> yeah. All like, right. So real quick, because I fa- I it's something I never thought about. Uh, do we know how the age difference between Marion? Ten years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, in the, the movie, in the movie, you mean? In, in oh, again, yeah, in the movie. In, Canada, uh, yeah. in the movie, Indiana Jones dated her when she was a teenager. Oh yeah. Oh, not not even. And I and I barely. And I yeah. didn't realize that. I'm like. It's really gross, but at the same time, I'm like, it's it's it so weird. It's kind of cool that he's like not a perfect hero. No, he never know, and, was. And, and like, and that's why again, like him and Han Solo, like it's cool that like we can have these action heroes who aren't good people. I hear that was a, a George Lucas. No, I think Steven Spielberg's like, no, he she should be older. George Lucas is like, no, it was uh, <laughs> stays uh, in. And you're yeah, like, oh, uh, Jesus. Uh, the actress Karen Allen, she, she it was like she had the thought of with, with uh, of it as well, and she's like, yeah, it'd be cool if like they had like this interesting past, like when he was with my dad, and yeah. then we got involved. I'm like, that is cool. You were like a. Kid. Makes, I don't, makes up. I mean, right. he's yeah. like 18, and you got. I don't, I don't so know. let's get the. No, so no, we're doing, we're doing. no, I'm just saying. It's like it's like it's a weird thing about the movie. So the final score, the final score, final score, yeah. Final tallies were uh, Ryan with five. Oh, okay. Sparks with seven. Hell yeah. Uh, Jesus, the Sparks. winner. Uh, myself six, nice, and Ben four. Not bad. I gotta change this to the not so impossible movie trivia challenge. <laughs> I don't know how we how we both how we yeah, all did just, so well. Just, just, I think next time, next time, I have to make it harder. Maybe no more. Well, because last time I didn't, well, last I didn't time rewatch you didn't do a multiple choice. I, I didn't, I didn't. Watch Jurassic Park, yeah, yeah, next time I didn't do multiple choice, and I didn't. I was like, mm, do I want to? Okay, next time, no more multiple choice. Sorry, Ben. No, no multiple choice will be hard. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> it can't be as impossible then, but like yeah. that takes away the fun. So like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like if it's no multiple choice, like there are some questions that are, that would just absolutely be like 
too hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, like what, what is Be- what do they think Belloc's name is? Like, it's like Belosh or something. Or something. Like that'd be yeah. like an easy yeah, one. Yeah. I think. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a lot in Raiders that I didn't realize. Like Belloc was a character, and I just I Belloc's always, so good. I always remember the the Nazi as the, as the main villain. Of the oh, movie. really? The glasses but, guy. But for whatever yeah. reason, I was like, well, oh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is so nuts and bolts. It's like he literally battles his his, himself. his shadow <laughs> self. Yeah, who like, tells him he's his shadow self? Yeah, but also <laughs> in the very beginning, like the okay, so. In, I'm gonna just gonna talk about the trilogy, cause, sure, because yeah. the other one doesn't even it just it's it's wonky. Don't worry about it. But um, the first adventure always perfectly mirrors the movie. Mm-hmm. So in Raiders of the Lost Ark, he gets the idol only for have it taken away. Balak even says, "You could win, but you have a poor choice of friends." Same thing happens to Balak. He could have won, but he chose the Nazis. They even talk about that. Mm-hmm. And at the very end, Indiana Jones wins, but. He gets the Ark taken away. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. In the uh, Temple of Doom, mm-hmm. he uh, he um, he wants the uh, diamond, fortune, and right. glory. But in the end, he ends up uh, he ends up being poisoned and fighting for his life. <laughs> in Temple Kalima. of Doom, he goes there for fortune and glory. Ends up being poisoned. Starts fighting for his life. It's right. all one to one. Yeah. And ends up just losing the diamond and losing the thing and just absolutely. And, you know, and in the last one, he uh, he wants the. Um, the cross of oh gosh oh the cor- Cortez uh, cor- uh, the cross- Corle- Corleone Corleone is it Corleone I think it's Corleone. Uh-huh. Cross of Corleone and um, I love Godfather and uh, yeah right and um, he gets it and uh, it's stolen from him and what happens is it it literally leads him directly to his father and at the end he doesn't get it but him and his father are together same thing with the 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 cup of Christ. He ends up losing that, but what he gains, as he says, illumination. That's why it's so interesting why the fourth one were just like, it's right here. Just do that. But then they have the adventure, the skull, which directly does relate to the adventure. It's not a side adventure. Their it's, knowledge sure. is power. Yeah, but so so it's fascinating how those movies set you up. They tell you yeah. exactly what's going to happen. Well, a lot, of, a lot of for what came from Lucas and Spielberg just having different visions of what the movie wanted to be. Like it's pretty well documented that George wanted the film to be a 50s sci-fi B-movie, whereas Spielberg wanted a more traditional Indiana Jones film. And yeah. We got half of both. We got half of both. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's kind of why I'm a little bit more interested in five. I mean, don't make another one, but if you're going to make another one... Is that with Harrison Ford? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, cool... Yeah, that's it. I'm worried it's going to be <laughs> like like a passing of the torch thing where it's, it's like, oh, be, it's a new Indiana Jones. Like, be, uh, just yeah. let it die. Yeah. It's going to be, quote, cool, dot, dot, dot. Well, I'm only quote. interested that's, in a five because we have four. Yeah. Especially because yeah, right? you can't... Yeah. You you can't do old man indie as the thing again we did because this we did old man yeah. now he's ten years older. <laughs> yeah, um, I I still wonder as we brought up that one time we were talking about Indiana Jones if they'll set it pre four. That'd be interesting. Yeah, oh. that'd be such a smart idea. Hell yeah! God, no wonder you won. <laughs> 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 All right, then should we get into our book club? Heck yeah! Yeah. Hey, welcome to the Fake Nerd Comic Book Store. Can I help you find anything today? Yeah. Hi. Um. Do you have any books? Can you be more specific? Um, anything readable? All right, then time now for our book club. Uh, I, it's my turn. I chose Witches. And uh, if you wanted to, you didn't have to, but Witches, uh, Bad Egg Halloween Special, which is a one-shot uh, that collected the Image Plus uh, kind of a couple pages uh, into one into one issue. I So I did get to read it because I figured we've all read Witches, so... Um, Mike joins us ag- again. I'm here. I also read Witches. Um, so what, let's just go around the horn. What do we all think of Witches? Uh, this is one of uh, this was one of Scott Snyder's uh, uh, first like big independent books after he came to DC. Uh, uh, and he's he loves horror stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is a, for me. This is a great book. I love this book. Uh, and I really I'm glad I read Bad Egg because it gives me much more of that really sad like world that these people have to live in and like the choices they have to make. Yeah. Um, and a lot, a Bad Egg really built the world yeah. in a way that I was looking for in in witches. Yes, and and. Like luckily, like in the back of this book, it says, "Hey, more witches is coming out. It's just taking a long time because uh, this book came out five years ago." Mm. Uh, but I think this is a super cool take on on you know like folklore of witches. Yeah. Uh, it's super super gross, which is which is always fun. And the witches' designs are so interesting. How they're kind of like decrepit and, and kind of both rotting. their eyes are on one, side, eyes on of one side of the face. Yeah, dude. yeah that's messed up. Um, I uh, I hated this book. Yeah, oh, I that's thought fair. it was so bad. You're allowed. I'm not to. kidding. That's fine. Like yeah. I was, I was, and I was like Scott Snyder. Yeah. yeah. Like, really? This is what he was writing. Yeah. This is written after he did like Batman. This is and the, during, the during, no, during. This is during Batman. Yeah. I mean, this is such a. 
this is such a oh you guys can i do this this mm-hmm. thing i wrote in high school can i publish this yeah. like that no that everyone was like no it's not good it's not good it's not good yeah. and then he gets batman and he does like court of owls and stuff right like i'm not, I'm not no yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah 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 and then that, that's amazing and then he's like, "How about this?" Like, "Yeah, let's go." It's like such a sophomore slump. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it just seems like I that. will. That's I will say, if I try to come from it from a different perspective, it is. It can be seen like a kind of pedestrian. Like oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Do, it Holy doesn't cow. really do anything new outside of like its premise. No, and, and seeing yeah. the quote from Stephen King, um, in the front, I was like, "Oh, of course!" Like right when, oh god, right when it was like. Uh, the exposition is so clunky. When it's like, you mean you, blah, 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 world famous children author and graphic designer? And I was like, yes. of course Stephen King liked this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, like, it's about, Steve, it's about a drunk King. author who's just trying to make, it's like, he read The Shining and wrote a cruddier version of it. Oh, Stephen, yeah, okay. Stephen King worked with Scott Snyder on American Vampire, which I probably think where that came yeah, from. So where that yeah, that's, really no, clearly. From. And so yeah. it's like, hey, Stephen, can you put on a quote for me? Yeah. The quote is, I read it. Like, uh, what, like, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> It, you're right. Great. It's, it's very. It's so basic. Yeah. The characters aren't flawed at all. They're like they're what you would write if you're not flawed yourself, well, no, or you they, don't want to put yourself. Well, I think into the dad's it. Per, the dad's pretty. Flawed. I, no, it's I what think you, the parents are pretty flawed. No, it's what it's it's how you write flawed people. It's like it's like edgy fan fiction. It's like mm-hmm. the dad's an alcoholic. Oh, it is like it is edgy. Like yeah. you yeah. guys, sure. He's an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. You guys, he's flawed. Ben, because he he's an alcoholic. <laughs> ben, <laughs> like, what about you? What did you think? It, I still like it. I still, I still thought it was, it was decent. Um, there's still time. Once did you, re- I, did you reread it for the, for this week? Yeah, or, or, yeah I, okay. I reread it, and then I, because there, when I first read it the first time, oh my god, monthly from you, Brandon. Yes. So there are times where a month went by, and I forgot what happened in the last thing of witches, and there, and then, um, <laughs> like the only time, even when I was, I was reading it, this time, when they're like the very end, when Sailor is like, "I'll pledge you all," and she sprays him with pledge, I'm still. Uh, what is pledge? It's, le- lemon, it's lemon pledge. You use it to wash <laughs> yeah, no, hardwood yeah, the, floors. Yeah. Like the pledge being an actual thing also was kind of confusing for yeah, me. Yeah, because I thought it's like you go to the witches and say, hey, I will pledge you this person. I will bring this person to you. Just give me a thing. Yeah. Because like in the very first uh, arc where, where the mom is stuck in the tree and the kid mm-hmm. whacks her across the face and says, hey, mom, pledge is pledged. Yeah. Like uh, they pledged you to the, the witches. The world I'm kind of glad that she didn't say The it mystery that way, was though. backwards. <laughs> I don't know. I will say, I will say, I think the. Um, the uh, progression of the escalation is pretty. It's pretty extreme. It uh, happens be- very fast. It happens very fast. Yeah. Like, we get that. Yeah. We get that. The the bald lady from the irons. Yeah. Who, like who ends up killing herself. Yeah, yeah uh, that, that was another thing because when she said go find the irons, I thought she meant like yeah. actual iron. If, like if oh, I, do you yeah. use get an iron sword? Like, or? That question isn't answered until yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, they're a group I, of hunters basically. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, Brandon, I was try. I was try. I reread this whole last night, but then I got halfway through Bad Egg, and I'm like, I need to go to sleep. I was right. Did you, three did hours you read sleep Bad Egg by any chance? No, I did okay. not. I, I actually not. think Bad Egg's better than the original Witch's book because it's mm. just like a focused story on this other family, uh, and it's a lot. Uh, actually, you might not like it because it is a little more edgy. Or we're like, uh, it's not. It's not edgy's not bad. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I think it was just poorly executed. Yeah. Like this is it's it is just a big fan fiction for Stephen King. I mean, even. Uh, what you guys just say, like, um, like, oh, the town's in on it, you guys. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, the, all these it is things. Kind it's, of stuff. It's yeah. so yeah, yeah. like, okay. I'll, I'll jump back to this uh, in a moment, but because you brought up bad egg, I do want to touch on bad egg for a second, which is uh, the it's set in the same world, and it's this uh, boy who's raised by a mom who's in the irons, mm. and so they they counter the witches and everything, and and he they move from town to town. Uh, and she's constantly like trying to train him, prepare him for a life of fighting these things. And he is getting too close to someone who they're very uh, suspicious. The family's going to offer him up that they've pledged him, mm. and he's too close to him. And they're becoming uh, like bonded friends. Like and then they friends. find out like he's he's gonna have to die because like the family that's pledged him is like their their highest horn, which is like they are like deep. They're like high priests in, in the, the in the witches we, lore. If you the high the high horns, they like put they like nurture baby witches to become new witches. So that, mm. that mm-hmm. it's kind of like a seed. We're yeah, putting yeah. a seed of a witch in in this town, and then they yeah. grow and become more. And so uh, the the boy that he's friends with. Uh, he's he's going to die, and like it's just this whole. He was time. born to be sacrificed, and right. that's like, and that's really and, sad. And the whole story of it is him kind of coming to terms with that and that kind of loss. But what made me really enjoy it is I read Scott Snyder's letter 
after that. Did you read that too? Mm-hmm. And he talked about that the whole story for Bad Egg comes from the fact that his son was having traumatizing nightmares, nightmares about shootings at school mm-hmm. and he's going into sixth grade. And his son- I wish I would have read Bad Egg. Why do you guys right. tell me to do witches when <laughs> Bad Egg's the good one? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Witch, I didn't know that. It's Witches Bad Egg. Okay. Uh, so, and so Scott Snyder said that because my son- kept having nightmares and talking to me about shootings my son asked me you know like what will happen to you are you going to die one day and i did the wrong thing and i lied and i said you know you never know like they're making new technological advancements in medicine all the time and he had the best sleep of his life and i couldn't sleep all night that's all and that's where the bad story came from okay so to circle back dude that's kind of exactly what i mean where it was like you can tell in this first which is yeah it's it's he was using trauma that was not his own and then and then you tell me this story, and it's like, oh, you, th- suddenly that's so much yeah. more fulfilling and real, and you can tell the experiences influence things. And like I think just... I think reading them because uh, I read them back to back. I Same. think that does read uh, read that way. Like it is it is Scott Snyder tapping into a a fear that he has, or and trying to adapt to trauma that he doesn't. Uh, whereas Bad Egg is him tapping into a trauma he does have. Yeah, that's what you know. That's why uh, this just seems like a shining ripoff with the alcoholism and then uh, the girl, the girl that's a greaser, the the bully that disappears. And it's oh, like, and then is it's like, like is part of it? That was yeah, pretty brutal. Well, she by got the way. disappeared, and then you're just like, yeah, that's what I mean. It was brutal, but for what that happens so quickly, sure. and then I'm like, I don't know who this girl is. I don't know anything about her bully, and I don't care. I'm on page. Four? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what is happening? For sure. Uh, I, I will admit that, like, my love, like, what I ca- like about witches so much is definitely, like, the world and the artistry. Yeah. Uh, Jock's it, art is, is Jock what is, sucks well, me in. Jock's art is incredible. Actually, I think I was a little. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what the right, right word is, but when I first was reading Witches back in 2014 when this first came out, I thought oh. the art was phenomenal. Really, I, I, I thought the art was scary. It was intimidating. It was, it was like, like oh god, more, it gets like more chaotic as yeah. the scarier things yeah. happen. Yeah, like mm-hmm. when the witches like start that. coming out, I'm like, it's, it's just gimmick. one combobulated mess. I'm like, this is terrifying. As I was rereading it again, I thought, what the f am I looking at? Well, I kind of, I yeah. You know who does it better? It. Uh, do you guys read Arkham Asylum? Uh, it was it was like a, a comic book. Uh, what was it called Arkham Asylum? It was like Batman, and he oh. like goes into Arkham Asylum, and the art is all cr- is that the, the great crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is oh. it? I think so. Yeah, and the art's just great... like crazier than that. Like like it's so good. It's like painted Clayface is this like festering like thing, and in in like that's that's I feel like that's what it was trying to go for. But in the back of the the issue, I uh, got I digitally downloaded it. It had like the colorist, and it was like yeah, and these are real paint splatters, uh, paint splatters that we. Didn't Photoshop filter? And I was like, yeah, I know. I know <laughs> it was because I'm looking at it. I think that uh, I w- high concept. Oh, here we go. Uh, I will say more execution. Yeah, I will say um, Jock's art definitely. Uh, it's more like like ethereal and weird. Like when he has to do reg- regular people, that's not what he excels at. He excels at really weird stuff, and that's why like the witches and like the the stuff where like there's like mouths inside of trees and eyeballs and trees. Like that's the yes. stuff I really like about it. But His are, regular character work is like it's, it's fighting each other. Now one, yeah. of, now one of the things the, the writing and the art. I'm kind of coming. In, I'm kind of coming in between you two. Uh, even when I read it uh, before and now reading rereading it, um, I have always kind of held, had a frustration with how many like blotches he uses as things kind of ramp up. Uh, because there are times where the art will be hard to see. Like it's, yeah. you don't really get it's a very clear messy. picture I, of something. Okay, so I noticed so that last night while I was reading Christopher it too. Nolan uh, in in Interstellar. There's when they're on the planet. There's a ticking clock, mm-hmm. and that you can't tell. That's just like a trivia thing. It's just tense. That's how you're supposed to do it. I was like, oh, the splotches are here. It's getting tense. Like it oh, was sure. like 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 if if I know you're doing it, you you, you failed. It didn't it didn't sure. work. I'm not sure. Tense. And I think the the pro- and a big problem was when I was downloading this. It was like, do you want to download um, lock and key? Hell and, yeah! And I I have all of them. Lock and key's amazing. Hell that yeah, gave me is. nightmares. Sure. That was brilliant. Right. And the that's sh- Stephen the show's King's coming son. out. That's Stephen King's son, mm-hmm. Max uh, Joe Hill. Joe, Joe Hill. Hill. Max Max. Something is Max Brooks is, is Mel Brooks. Yeah, Mel Brooks son. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, Joe I get, Hill. I get the ben, son. Ben you're uh, Joe Hill. You guys are best friends, right? You guys no. go to high school together? No. No. Okay. In Maine. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's gotten um, better, guys. So then I Castle thought about Rock. how ho- that was horror, and the art was so clean. And this is horror plus the artwork is reflecting that, and I think it starts to fight. I yeah. think if if the if you had a, a clean story, but the visuals gave you the horror, it would be very unsettling. Or if you had, you know, the um, the story is horror and the visuals are just very sharp and you're not trying to 
lull us with that the, because they're both kind of messy. You, I just know. I just feels, know what's happening. I feel. I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. mean. Yeah. So it's like it was like oh. I can understand that. Yeah. yeah and yeah. again, like I think Bad Egg like kind of fixes a lot of those problems that yeah. I, I think, that I, I think that, the art still uh, does have that similar thing. But yeah. I, I, because, but I think it, it's different because Bad Egg works with such a different format because it was published uh, monthly in like two like page, by pages. Yeah. Like into like two. That's page such a weird spurts, idea too. Because it was Image Plus. Image Plus did the same thing with like a Negan story. So I yeah. knew they were going to publish that story mm-hmm. eventually uh, because they published that Negan story but uh bad egg was interesting to read after this uh because especially if we read the beginning of bad egg the letter he writes in the beginning it's the mom is the is the woman who hangs herself in witches mm-hmm. so oh, but you don't see that you don't see that progression in this book <laughs> right. so there's something else that happens i thought that was kind of kind of weird because we don't read them so close yeah and i don't i don't uh I don't really. I want to kind of know more about that story. I guess we're going to know more. He he claims at the end of Bad Egg that there will be more witches this year. So at the end of this year, probably. Yeah, yeah. And October's coming up, so it'd be a good time to to yeah. put it out. Yeah. yeah, you guys should all go and read Lock and Key. Oh, I have. I really want. No, not you. I'll be oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Stay away from my, Mike's recommendation. Not this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I really love the imagery of of the people trapped in the trees when the witches Me come too. up and yeah. take them. That's Me too. that's the kind of thing that I'm like just as a horror concept. I really enjoy. Yeah. I like the I like the the kind of like turning the witches things on the head. Like I I like the um the idea of the cauldron is just a really burning hot um uh place that that just kills people. Um I I do kind of like the the reinterpretation of the witch mythology. I, yeah. I thought that was kind of that was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, you're you're not wrong, but then it's like witches aren't green skinned monsters anymore like, yeah i know i know i know i know, uh, I, 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 know when, when, I know that's what we're doing you know, when people are doing that thing where it's like this isn't your father's witch there, like, there, there was a thing like, where okay, like, all right, uh, all right. Uh, i did like I'm the moment that, yeah. where yeah. we're like uh the bald lady from the irons gives gives the main character like here's all the stuff to fight the witches yes. but then it's like the walking dead you you cover stuff on you so the witches don't notice you but i'm like oh i've seen that bit, before and the bit that I these are rat of, rounds these are good and yeah. the bit that i kind of that i kind of like understand where mike is coming from uh um is when uh the Police officer is like, "Oh, you got that. Well, that's going to be good, but make sure you do this." This and, crazy oh, exposition that. dump, like, like what he does is the happening? Vi- the villain monologue. Like, I'm telling you all this because I know and you're going to die. The cop shows up and it's like, the cop's like, "Well, I don't think there's a problem at all." And then he walks over and looks at the list, and the cop's name is on that list. Well, and you're like, okay, all right. I thought also, also, um, non-helpful cops hate that cliche. Sure. Like, my daughter is missing in the woods. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's she's only not. been a couple hours. You could just go home. And you're like. Oh, just don't even put cops in. The, oh, oh, he's a bit. Uh, you got to see that. Just I, I did like the twist that the mom was the one who pledged her. I uh, will concede to that. That was good. Yeah, yeah. I was when I she too. stood that up. Was, I was like, "Word!" I did not see that coming. Yeah, that was pretty. But that, yeah. was, that was all right. That lines up with things. That's good. That's what. That might have been what sold this. That's that might have been like the strength of yeah. that twist. That was incredibly sad, but like also very that, real. Very real. Here we are. Yeah. Like, oh, but we don't get to dive into her selfishness. Instead, see, this was oh, this was drives me nuts. <laughs> we don't get to dive into her selfishness. We get to dive into my family was hunted. Oh, I don't care. Oh my god, I don't care. I want to know about your personal. flaws. Yeah. Your person. We know he, he's an alcoholic. The his giant. A tattoo, which was just the worst in the world. Like, I wonder <laughs> if a Ferris wheel is going to come up in this comic later. Yeah, I will say, like, yeah, oh uh, that as soon as I saw the Ferris wheel thing, it immediately reminded me of um, A Star Is Born with Bradley Cooper, where the very beginning of the movie oh, you see a wait, bunch of nooses, the nooses. Oh, yeah. and I'm like, mm-hmm. foreshadowing. <laughs> like, wow, like, have you guys ever foreshadowed something before? You don't have to hit it so hard, yeah, right, over the head. Yeah, I love the I love the um, thing about Bradley Cooper saying, "Yeah, the nooses were an accident. We just thought that was cool." Oh, Bradley, bull. bull. Oh, Bradley. Bull. <laughs> yeah, I think this is um, uh, yeah. Now that we're yeah, final, re- final reflecting final thoughts, on so it, uh, the, it, uh, I do notice some problems that I didn't the first time. Uh, just because I think I was like, I wanted to love a Scott Snyder Jock book so hard because they did the Black Mirror, which is one of my favorite Batman books when Dick Grayson's Batman. Yeah, and that's I mean, like that's, the, that's what I mean. That's this the is where this shit. came from. So, from this like this yeah. So I think maybe I had some like go- else like, you got Scott some, oh, some I goggles got this, on uh, eighth grade paper I wrote. Yeah, right. And yeah. especially especially because, uh, like you said, the concept is. I think if he does more witches, I think it'll be better. Again, because looking, bad egg is good. Looking at bad egg and and like my my like what you said with the he's now tapping into a trauma that he actually feels. Uh, the horror feels more real and less kind of grungy and less edgy. Yeah, yeah. Um, writing is about being truthful. Yes, in a in a in a clever way. Yeah, I, I still really like I still really like the 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 main book witches. I'll pick it up when it comes out again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna definitely gonna. I I, I like the world a lot. I'm interested to keep going with it. I think there's some there's some good imagery on, in it. Um, one of the things I really like in, in horror is just 
uh, things that are just kind of slightly out of focus. Oh yeah, um, that you know there's something there, but you can't quite make it out. That's there's a lot of that in this one. And it just works for me. Mm-hmm. All right, I can see that. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Um, ben, final thoughts? I, I still enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you you have to say that because you saw Stephen what yesterday? Aren't you yeah. guys? You guys they, are good. No, lunch. He I, was at Joe Hill's wedding. Oh. He, was, he was at you, when you at the launch of the Were Stephen King Joe Museum. Were you Joe Hill's best man? No, it was not. Oh, no, he was second down. It was the best man was his brother, and then oh, you're that, right. Because that's right. How, the brother's always the best. You're right. Man. You're yeah. right. That's how it is. That's, that's why I'm not fine. getting married. Okay, uh, <laughs> my my final thought because I've had like six. The cover. <laughs> Can you read that quote from Stephen King? It's fabulous. A triumph. A triumph. Was this a triumph? No. no. Would you call this a triumph? I think it's a good comic, but like yeah, th- this word triumph. <laughs> we really we do, need to stop using that. It's for, like epic. But, yeah. Like <clears throat> yes, yes, it is. We could do a whole podcast on Stephen King putting too many quotes on things <laughs> to say this is fantastic. What is this, Honey Nut Cheerios? See what this King Honey Nut Cheerios is a triumph. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have two bowls. There could bowls. be a podcast on that alone. When we eat lunch, I'm going to be like, mm, this quesadilla is a triumph. <laughs> triumph. <Yeah. laughs> so you start saying it, and you're like, wait, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> also, I, I also want to say, we're, sorry, one more final thought for me as well. Uh, even when this book came out, I don't like I don't like it when they're just like, here's the definition of witches. This is, this is what I'm talking about. The first no, it's thing. not. And then it scratched out. I was like, you, ha- you have to be kidding me. This hey, is what so- if everything you knew was wrong? <laughs> that's, why, that's why it rubbed me the wrong way. And the, yeah. the fir- even the first time I read it, like that, but I, I always kind of like blocked that out of my memory because I do like the book. That's almost general. like fourth wall breaking. Yeah. Like, Guys, that's forget, not what we're about. Forget, when, I first about re- when I first read Scott this. Scott Snyder's here. Yeah. Oh. When I first read this book, I was very much on the Scott Snyder uh, core of Owl's High. Like, yeah. we everything, all? everything, what I mean? like, everything that was coming out that had Scott Snyder's name on it. Like, if, this is gold. Gotham isn't Batman. It's like, oh, holy cow. What if there's a family that's older than the white? Oh, goodness. Said, yeah. I thought you said, what if Gotham isn't Batman? I was like, I don't think that's what the book's about. Oh, <laughs> every, uh, number one, every Batman comic starts with my city. She screams. She so screams. stop. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, so I thought, I, I, uh, okay. For whatever reason, I was like, Batman is Gotham? That's what oh. Court of Owls was he dresses about. dresses up as Gotham Have you read? Away? Have you? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's like what, a big cosplay yeah. of Gotham. <laughs> Anyway, God. Yeah, but now, now that I'm rereading this, I'm like, yeah, I could see some of the, like, like the art, especially the splotches. They really, I was like, I'm like squinting. I'm like, what's going on here? And even get still, it? it's even, the descent into madness. Don't you get it? Uh, I guess not. Yeah, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then even when I was reading, it, like they're like, oh, they pl- pledges a spray or and is like find the eyes. I'm like, like are they are group of people? Are yeah, they actual? I thought they were actual. I thought they were shackles. I thought at they were first. swords. I, I thought they were something like and use this at weapon the to very kill a witch. And I was like, oh, I think they're people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's still things that like when I did read Bad Egg, I'm like, okay, now I get it. But that's what you want in a story. You want people to have to get it way years later after yeah. you. <laughs> the after seventh you, issue is yeah, 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 like, yeah, okay, cool. Um, all right. So, Sparks, final thoughts. Oh, uh, I mean, like, I, I still enjoy it. Again, like, I just would reiterate that it's a, a fascination with uh, reinterpretation of witches in general. I know that's the gimmick, but, like, the I, I like a uh, take like yeah, that. Totally this is it. very much like a, it expands on, um, I mean, not directly, but it's kind of expanding on what I wish Blair Witch would have given me. Sure. Wait for that video uh, game, uh, baby. In some ways. Like, this this is essentially what I want to see. Yeah, we yes. talked about E3. Oh, I should have listened. I should oh, watch your E3 yeah, baby. special. There is a, a Blair Witch video game coming out that view. looks bananas. Anyway, yeah, it's made um, by an actually good like horror developer too. Yeah, Interesting. might be the best Blair Witch thing that'll ever exist. Uh, <laughs> hey, Sparks, forget yeah. everything you knew about Witches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what this. Uh, it's with a Y. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, right. Okay, sorry. Extreme. I also, I also will say, like, um, I accepted a challenge because when, uh, when I was offered this book, it was from our friend Matt Ferranti. Yeah. And oh, yeah. he offered it to me, and he said, "I dare you to read this whole thing." sitting on your front porch looking at the forest because it, back where I lived in Monterey, uh, it, it's dark. There's Spook no street lights. Spooky There's woods. trees across from my house. And, I, and he's like... They cut down all those trees, right? Yes. Yeah. And he's like, just sit there and just sit there and read it. And I was like, okay. And I got to like issue four and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go inside right I now. Can, I can sit here and read this and just look at them trees. <laughs> Yeah, yeah those dark, it's, dark hey, trees go, where every sparks go someplace scarier than this comic book. Yeah, exactly. And read this comic somewhere, book. somewhere that feeds Were into it for sure. Yeah, dark woods are scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so, so is that it? are we good? Should yeah, we a thumbs up. Which I, 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 I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's good in its own way. It definitely has its flaws. I agree with. I don't disagree with anything that Mike has said or mm-hmm. anyone else has said. I'm like, yeah, it's got it's got them problems. Yeah, for them sure. problems. 
Um, all right. So next week we are going <coughs> to be skipping the book club. Oh, that's right. I was like book club, right? Yeah. So next week we are going to be skipping the book club, and uh, we're going to be talking about the boys. We're oh going to be comparing God. the first volume of that of the comic book with the TV series. Now the entire series is on streaming, so I was going to say maybe just get as far as you can. I will have the fit series finished because that's who I am. Sure. But we will talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. How far you get? Yeah. Just get as far as you can. It's the whole series on on Amazon. It's only like eight episodes, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. Seven? Oh, easy. Yeah. Amazon Prime. That's easy. Uh, I'm watching during this. Podcast. We all have. We all have. <laughs> we all have uh, uh, lives. Yes. Um. All right. So we will also have an, a special with Mike. Woo. Uh, he's going to be doing an X Men. Uh, looking back at the X Men films. We, we don't do that enough. Apparently, it's <laughs> over. Um. Uh, How long we talk about House X? Well, no, they not long enough, baby. Well, none of the X Men. None of the X Men. One are issue done. of a comic. <laughs> <laughs> So look okay. forward to that. Uh, if you if you've listened to the episode with Mike before, you'll know that he does not like the X Men movies. No, I do not. Um, <laughs> so so t- take a look at that. Uh, hey, I Mike. am working on a way. Oh, sorry, sorry, but I'm not done. Uh, I am working on a way to a al- to get th- those special episodes. So it will go up on Wednesday. Uh, but I'm working on a way to get those special episodes for Patreon early. Mm. So uh, if you donate to our Patreon, you may be able to get that episode uh, before. Spicy. Before uh, Wednesday. Look at that, patrons. Yeah. <laughs> My patrons. Um, and there will, next week there will also be a special uh, review of Hobbs and Shaw. Fast oh. presents Hobbs and Shaw. Also, maybe a Midsummer review. <laughs> maybe that. Yeah, as we're well. working on that. We're working on it. All right, then. Let's get out of here. Okay, bye. Um, thanks. Sarah. So you can find us on YouTube. We have a YouTube page. We sure uh, do. As Spark said, Fake Nerd Watch. We'll, uh, two episodes this week. Two episodes this week. Heck yeah, baby. Woo-hoo. Swamp Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Basement Arcade, one episode this week, probably. Oh, yeah. We got to uh, just record one more and then we're done. Oh, boy. Yeah, you guys well, we're done with, with the Colossus. We're done with a game, a not game. done with the series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike, if you don't if you don't know, we have two shows on. Uh, I love YouTube. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I follow, I follow you guys oh, loosely. Thanks. Loosely. Thanks. Don't want to hold on too tight. Of course yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are a Funko, a Funko, a Funko <laughs> affiliate. Uncle Funko. <laughs> uh, use promo code Shop Ten at uh, uh, at checkout for ten percent off your purchase. Use the use the link in the description below. Uh, we have a Patreon, as I mentioned before. Like I said, uh, I I'm close to finding out how to make that RSS feed work. But if you do, if you do. Um, Subscribe to our Patreon five dollar tier. Um, you get a lot of cool stuff, and and working on a way to get episodes early and more possibly uh, and in more. The future. So, um, and we also have a T Public. I'm actually wearing one of our T shirts available on T Public right sure now. Are. Looks so yeah. good. Doesn't it look Looks good? So good. Good yeah. color. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, uh, designed it. He sounds like a loser. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he loves the X Men movies, though. <laughs> uh, we do it. We have two designs up by Mike: uh, our miscellaneous uh, design and our um, fake nerd uh, uh, fake nerd podcast design. Uh, we have a basement arcade up. Yes. Um, and we also have a suburban proctologist shirt up. It's a cool design. <laughs> that is a cool design. Yes. Um, that is Jeremy's show. Um, we are we've partnered up with him to get that to get some merch from his show up. Uh, people have already bought him. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. People already bought that stuff. It's most likely him. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what? I didn't consider that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I just got the notification that somebody bought it. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, um, you can, uh, both those links for Patreon and T Public are in the description below. Um, I thank you to everyone who listens. We greatly appreciate it. As I mentioned before, thank you to Jeremy. Uh, you can find him on Instagram at Jeremy Velucci Keyboards. Uh, he does our theme music. New music coming on the horizon. Ooh. Um, new music coming. Uh, for from Jeremy, a lot of cool stuff coming from Jeremy in the cup in the coming year, the rest of the year, six wow. months. How many? Six months. Six months left in this year. Yep, halfway um, there. In the next six months, uh, he also has a show, as I mentioned, about the T-shirt Suburban Proctologist. It is right now not uh, online yet, but we will be getting it back online soon. Uh, the T-shirts were kind of the 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 merch was kind of the first step in in getting it back there. So you can find that on facebook.com slash Suburban Proctologist official, Instagram at Suck Podcast, Mike Matola. Thank you so much. For, oh, thank you guys for having me. For yeah, I, you know I love being here. Yeah, we love having you up here. With you guys, it's so much. It's great. Um, you you did you designed our logo for the show. Yes, I did. Was, just, thank you so much for asking me to do that. Yeah. Or maybe I was just like, I'm doing this, please. You you offered. <laughs> Let and we were me like, hang out. Well, shit, man. Yeah, if you want to do I it. I like doing stuff. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. No, I, I, I love everything. It's so much fun. Life's I, too short. Why would, right? I don't know. Just that you drove posters. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know that. You know that. Yeah, um, yeah. You you did our Fakner podcast design, mm-hmm. um, which is great, and you did our miscellaneous design, mm-hmm. uh, which is also great. Um, 
I don't think I've ever seen you do anything that wasn't great. I'll be honest. Well, I don't show that stuff. That's of locked not. away. Of course right? not. Yeah, in a trunk. Where can they find you, Mike? You can th- find me uh, at Mike Matola, M A T O L A, on Instagram and Twitter, and you can find uh, all of my poster work at linebylineposters.com. Yeah. Um, and as far as Mithelanius goes, because I said we, we have a thing, uh, Mithelanius, uh, I have started working on my Mithelanius episodes. Um, I have made a, I made a goal for myself to write one thing every day. Um, Proud of you. Made some, made some good progress. I didn't do every day, but I made some really good progress. A lot of that being Mithelanius. So cool stuff coming from us in the next couple. That's awesome. It's so exciting. Months. I love it. I love yeah. seeing this stuff. Um, all right, then. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all at Fake Nerd Podcast, FakeNerdGuys at gmail.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us personally, I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Ben? Ben Magna 27 on Instagram and Twitter. Ryan? At Hideo Kojima talks about Death Stranding, saying, Heartman is a member of Bridges. His heart stops every 21 minutes. He spends three minutes of his day uh, in a world of the dead, and he comes back to life by AED. He dies 60 times a day. I'm at DJ Tony Snark. I'm excited for Death Stranding. Sparks. Sparks Witty on Instagram, S P A R K Z Witty. And Mike, as hey, you Mike, said. you can follow me at Mike Matola on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you, oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. I, what, the thing. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, rate and review wherever you get us. Until next week, guys, stay fake nerds. Stay fake nerds.